from Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is The Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, comedians Orny Adams and Lisa Curry. And now, not optimistic about Phil's chances at the Westminster Dog Show this week. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on a church with Adam Mendick. Get it on. Welcome to the show. Thanks for sharing. We love that about you. Comedian writer Lisa Curry is joining us, and comedian writer and actor Orny Adams is joining us as well. Good to see you guys. Thanks. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. So here's a thought that may have been something that you've dealt with over the last uh, several years. Um, I realize that I, in almost every package I get, whether it's pre-sliced cheese or throat lozenges or whatever, I end up opening with my mouth Mm. initially. I cannot Mm. get things open. Mm. And so when I get the pre-sliced cheese, it's got the resealable zipper thing. Mm. Which works zero percent of the time <laughs> right well in the hands of a competent person maybe but not the people i live with okay. but the part above that i use my teeth for to get it like started yeah. I, I feel like I'm, I'm putting a lot of plastic in my mouth mm. and they say you're not really supposed to eat that much plastic hey. it's, it's bad for you but i find myself constantly tearing away it uh, all sorts of pouches that are resealable, but I can't get the initial hymen busted on it before I can get to the resealable part. I, I find this shocking as a toolsman. Yes, that you. This sounds like something I would do, and you would criticize me. <laughs> yes, for not having the proper tool. Like this feels like a chance for you to open a drawer, yes. pull out some sort of scissor. Yes. Of your liking, perhaps yes. a three-inch, six-inch, who knows, <laughs> yes. Japanese uh, sanded-down blade, <laughs> you know, right? They're yeah. known for their scissors. Yes, I know. And I, I fault myself, but I also fault the manufacturer. Like, there's, Are they worried about people tearing it open in the store and like eating the cheese and putting it back? Or where, where are we at with this? I feel like some packaged cheese, if you're eating that in the first place, you don't need to worry about eating plastic. It's mm. a scent, like the American. Oh, the American Velveeta. What is Velveeta? <laughs> I had that the other day. I don't even. Know. By the way, same package I've had since I was a kid. Yeah, <laughs> it's not going bad. Have you noticed dairy products don't go bad anymore? Well, not the synthetic ones, but, but I'm I'm talking about more your pre-sliced uh, cheddar. Or uh, Havarti, yeah. which I don't really know. Don't, no one knows what Havarti is, but yeah. it's good. But I'm talking about like those packages. I think, and I'd like to you know, propose and see what everyone's opinion here in the studio is, and maybe this can be our first Twitter poll of the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't like to do it like that, where you, you, put, you know how it says there's a little thing here, poll here? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, it, it's uneven. And it drives my OCD crazy, if I can say OCD, <laughs> crazy. When do you it's take un- it out and like put it in another container? No. If I, if I do that, I go, you know what? I'm going to be like everybody else, and I'm going to tear it like they want me to. And then when it's uneven, you know what I do? I go in the drawer, I get the scissors, and I even it out. I can't have uneven opening <laughs> of the packaging. I time. don't <laughs> like the idea that my manlyhood is brought into question by being <laughs> defeated by a sack of Cheetos, you know, uh-huh. right? Like grab each side and I go, yeah. and I like, I grew up watching guys on TV, like the strongman competition where they take a telephone book and like tear it in half yeah. or hot water bottle and <laughs> blow it up until it pops. And yeah. here I am struggling with a sack of Doritos, uh, and I count. I don't have enough grip or upper body to actually get it open. I don't like the, the sign that that's that that just take the middle of it and just compress it. No, so the air c- opens up the the Doritos. Do I you don't, know these people? No, because no. you're smushing all the chips. You're ruining them. But at this point in the night of drinking, I don't think that's, that's really a good, good point. Thought. You know what I mean? Orny and I will be uh, performing tonight. As you hear this yes. at the uh, Hollywood Improv. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Harlan Williams is on that. Love Harlan. Uh, Jay Leno's Love on Jay. there. And um, Eric Griffin. Eric Griffin is on there. So it's quite a lineup. Maybe a few tickets left. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, and people online are saying, you know, you could charge more for the tickets. Mm-hmm. You you could stream this and make a lot of money. And I think you and I probably want to tell everybody we're not in this for the money. That's right. We're Come in on. this because we're artists. That's right. We're pure. Yeah. Just th- seeing you people laugh that's, in the audience. That's all the payment. <laughs> payment enough. We need. Yes. And then later on. When our car payment comes due, yep. we go down to the dealership and make them laugh. That's all we do. And then we they erase the debt. <laughs> yeah. We pay it forward. Then we pay it forward. We pay it forward. We take your laughter and your enthusiasm, we take it to the mortgage uh, bank, and we then make them laugh. Have you ever done these like local shows where they ask you to do a fundraiser, and it's for people that are better off than you? Yes. Like they. Yes. I. Okay. I. My kids. Sorry. <laughs> you, you've, you've, I've retrieved a memory. I love it. My sister's kids used to go to a private school in Malibu. And they all, every kid had a mm-hmm. tablet and mm-hmm. a laptop and three mm-hmm. iPhones and a horse. Yeah. <laughs> like they literally had everything. And it was this beautiful setting in Malibu and I got roped in to doing a fundraiser and I found myself out on stage in front of ton- not yeah. getting paid right in front of tons of people have tons more money than I do right. trying to raise money for lily white kids who are looking for like a no. fourth MacBook Pro or right. something right that's when I realized we jumped the shark yeah yeah I one time a local club asked me to do a show for one of the waitresses to raise money for her to go to law school yes I thought well, she's right. doing better than any of us yeah and yeah I think these yeah. are the, the Does people. It, do we raise money for everything now sorry yeah, yes, we, do. we do yeah we do because Literally because everything we're the clowns so this right. happened in New York City years ago where I did a fundraiser a, a black tie event mm-hmm. and they asked me to donate my time and I did and then I noticed all the organizers showed up in limos and car services <laughs> right. and I got up there and I said I have a question the catering did they donate the food are the right. waitresses working for why do they think the clowns we're clowns in this lifetime. Right. Because the 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 conceit is you don't really do anything. Mm-hmm. Like the caterers, they have to show up with chafing dishes and sterno pots and they you know, gotta stew open packages of cheese. With their teeth, you know they what I mean? We're incapable of You stand around <laughs> and make fart jokes with a beer in your hand. That's not really working. By the way, I would love at one of these open kitchen restaurants, you see the chef trying to open the cheese. <laughs> <Open his mouth. laughs> Is teeth an actual tool? Did the creator that gave us digits, that put us ahead of these other animals, the the thumb which allows us to grip things, did the creator intend for the teeth to be used as an instrument? Adam, go. At least, I'm sorry. I posed the question to you. I'm sorry. No, I'm going to say yeah. I think anything, your feet can be a fucking tool if you work hard enough. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, wow. I, I recently opened a little vodka traveler. Mm. This is the other thing that's of concern to me. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you get the little traveler size bottles, the little mini yeah. size ones to freshen up your drink on that flight yeah. or whatever it is, some of them have the cap that is so small at the top that you can't grip it well enough huh. to open it up and you have to use your teeth Mm. and i'm just saying if you are going to put this thing in your mouth and try to open it with your teeth uh don't do it in the airport bathroom where i did it because i caught a glimpse of myself really in the mirror (laughs) it's a low moment i didn't like trying to gnaw through a bottle of vodka at 6 45 in the morning (laughs) didn't seem like a good take how did you you get it off the plane opened did you sneak it off did you Sneak it. No. The bottle. I, the bottle. Oh, you bring it with you. You bring it with you. Oh, really? You're bringing booze onto the plane? Well, a lot of the flights <laughs> that's now. That's a lot of liquid. Yeah. That's a lot of liquid. A lot of them are like, ever since people started fist fighting and yeah. urinating yeah. on serving carts yeah. and things of that nature, some of the airlines have been like, hey, we're going boozeless on right, this flight. Right. And I'm like, that 
that's for you, but not not for me. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is a hellish flight yeah. on Spirit Airlines. <laughs> I'm not going to, I don't want to remember this. I saw, and I'll, I have two thoughts, I have many thoughts, but this is your show. Uh, the first is, I believe caps are getting smaller on everything because of conservation. Mm-hmm. So you notice like bottle caps, there's, there's barely any grippage anymore. Right, right. And now with booze, you know, people like you, who you need it. Mm-hmm. You need that fix. And now you're... <laughs> Your your poor teeth. What's left of them is. <laughs> but I was on a plane, and I'm. I, listen, I I love dogs, and I know people need their dogs for support. No, they don't. Okay, thank you for saying that. <laughs> so, or there's something wrong with them. Yeah. So, but now they're bringing big dogs, like the, you know the ones that uh, in the Alps when someone goes missing and they got the thing of brandy around their Saint neck. Saint Bernard. They got yeah. those on the plane now. They got m- emotional support. Uh, St. Bernard's. Yeah. And one was in the aisle the whole... So when the flight attendants are pushing the cart up and down, the, they got to pull the dog in. <laughs> and I, I go, at what point are they going to say something? Right? Right. They say nothing because it's a dog. You can't go against a dog. No. Okay. Now, halfway through the flight, I go... And I turn no. around. Oh, the no. dog <laughs> took a dump no. in yeah. the aisle. Yeah. Uh, okay? And mm. now the crew has to come over... Right. Clean this up. Yes. Like this is normal. Yeah. Still better behavior than half the passengers. <laughs> Probably, I gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, the part that I've found with the big dog that's laying against a bulkhead or in the aisle or whatever, that's fine. I don't like it, but you know, those those are the times we're living in. It's the conversation right before that when the Flight attendant comes by and you got your backpack down at your feet. And mm-hmm. She's like, you got to tuck it under the seat right. in front mm-hmm. of you. And you're like, okay. And it wedges. Yeah. And there's still some sticking out. She's you sure you got to get it full in. I'm like, <laughs> there is a Great Dane yeah. that is lying in yep. this aisle yeah. right now. Right. <laughs> Surely that's more obstructive than my backpack, which is tucked under the seat in front of me, right? The double standards are ridiculous, okay? So one time, I, to make a point, I, there was a dog next to me, and I, I called the flight attendant over, and I said, hey, I'm actually allergic to dogs. And she said, would you like to get off the flight? <laughs> and as she's saying this, she leapt over the seat to swat somebody eating peanuts. Because right. God forbid the right. peanut people get exposed to a peanut. Yes. Can we do this with the peanut people? Because the peanut people, the allergic to peanut people, Mm -hmm. I think it transcends peanuts. Mm. I think it's it's bigger and broader than peanuts. Like I remember flying Southwest years ago, and the only thing I ever looked forward to about flying Southwest was the peanuts. (laughs) And then there was a seasonal peanut thing, which is after some date, they would give you the honey roasted peanuts versus the roasted plain oh. peanuts. And it, it was just a little mystery, whether it be in the plane or in the bedroom. That's all I'm asking yeah. for, you know? And, and I would find myself sitting there yeah. going, I wonder which miniature peanut sack I'm going to get. What's the date today? Wow. Do we get the honey roasted? Yeah. But someone had called ahead and said, my kid has peanut allergies, remove all peanuts, and they mm-hmm. removed all peanuts. So the only thing that I looked forward to on the flight was removed. Can we create a devil's island, a place where all the allergic peanut people, right. their fucking snot-nosed kids and their over-efficient officious moms could just go live in harmony and be annoyed by one another mm-hmm. and so that we could get the fuck on with our lives and live yeah. in freedom? Yeah. I think we could send a lot of people off to another island, yeah. What? But are the peanut people incapable of not eating the peanuts if they're on the plane? Like, how do they handle... The confrontation of peanuts outside of the plane. From what I understand, it's like a something with the peanut dust oh. in the air gives them a severe allergic reaction. Interesting. They would I don't know argue. How we came to this. They place. would argue yeah. peanut particles, but my argument would be this fl- This plane has been hopscotching the United right. States from yeah. Phoenix to Burbank, mm-hmm. from uh, from Phoenix to Seattle and stuff, mm-hmm. with peanuts aplenty, and now you want them removed for this one flight right. to Vegas. Your peanut dust worries, it's in the air. It's it, it exists. It's symbolism at this point. Not to yes. mention the shit particles in a in the average airplane. Like that's really the worry for yeah. me. Yeah. 
They ruined, they harshed all our mouths by explaining that what happens when you flush the toilet, that the shit particles go airborne. Where, and when did this study? Weaponized. This is a study that came out? This is a study that comes out. Well, you know what? I'm noticing at the gym now more and more, and I do want to get this into my routine, but it's very disturbing. <laughs> they've, they've taken the to- the hand towels out, the, the paper ones that for years were great, and now they put in these old school blowers. Right. They're not even new. They're not Dyson. They right. bought them from like some high school in, right. in Glendale or right. something. So the old ones that you can just point, mm-hmm. do you know what these are? Yeah. yeah. Nobody's using them for their hands. People mm. are under there with their armpits. Oh. Yeah, they're they're doing their their back. Their Occasional hand. ball sack. But there is ball sackage. There's also cleaning of flip flops and then blow <laughs> <No>. drying them. <laughs> <laughs> and I, this this is something I have to inhale if I want to go to the bath. Like what what's the solution? Now I got to wear a diaper. I mean, so I don't go to the bathroom in the gym. What's <laughs> yes. wrong with people? We've got to bring back shame. Let well, one hundred percent. Let me regale you with a story from many years ago when I was in Vegas. I was at a nice hotel, and there was a guy in the men's locker room who was shaving mm-hmm. in the nude. Yeah. All okay. right. Okay. Fine. One foot on the floor, mm-hmm. the other foot planted uh-huh. on the countertop. No. Wow. Craned up no. <laughs> on the countertop, balls, yeah. full ball mm-hmm. exposure, leaning in front of the mirror. I don't know why his foot needed to be on top of the countertop. Yeah. yeah. Seems to me like I've shaved almost every day for 40 years. I just stand with both of my feet on terra firma. But he had the one foot up there. You see the people on the flights like using their feet yeah. to program the touch screen, yeah. Yeah. using their feet. I see people I see people I know who uh Sarah Silverman is one of these people. This oh. women do this. Oh women Uh-oh. do this because they're shorter. And they're more flexible, and they don't have quite the sense that guys have. I know a lot of women who sit on sofas with their feet yes. perched up onto the sofa. Yeah, yeah. Like that would they, be me, yeah. They sit, not how God created the sofa, <laughs> which is for you to sit yeah. on a pillow and Day put your eight. feet on the ground. Day nine was the couch, I Them think. wedging your, they wedged their feet yeah. up on that, Even the that's mm-hmm. making me uncomfortable. Top of the sofa with their shoes. They just walked in off yeah. the street. Yeah. It's a material sofa. Yeah. What is that? Why aren't they bothered by that? I mean, I'm a no shoes in the house. I have thing. no shoes in the house, too. Oh, so. you are? Yeah. Okay. Feet but on the couch, but no shoes. Two questions. How many times have you seen Sarah Silverman do this that you want to out her <laughs> on this podcast? <laughs> I mean, this must be some sort of habitual. I'm not judging. <laughs> <laughs> but enough. There's a lot of women who will sit like cross legged on the sofa, yeah. feet up under them. On the, the mm-hmm. some, it's a combination of them being shorter, flexible, and always cold. Right. Yeah. They're like a dog in a cold room where they're all circled up on yeah. themselves. Like they they get bunched up. I don't know if it's a protective but thing. But there are different. I hate to say this because gender is a much bigger discussion. But there are different things or rules for men versus women. So if you're in a locker room and a woman's foot is up on the counter, fantastic. Yeah. For <laughs> Lovely. Us. For us. Just made my day. I think for everybody. Well, look at that piece of yeah, art. Yeah, we got to shave too. Yes. <laughs> and I'm yes. sure that guy probably moved on to shaving his testicles. I don't know. I just, I stood there and I marveled <laughs> I, at him. I have been upset um, by men being naked in locker rooms my entire I'm not even that naked. I don't shave naked at home. Mm-hmm. I'm disgusted. <laughs> yeah, disgusted by you know what I mean. I block half the mirror, so I have to mm. see my you turn lower the lights bo- off. Turn the lights off. Block the mirror like I'm sitting shiva, <laughs> like a Jewish shiva, and uh, and shave. Okay, mm-hmm. in the locker room, this is what I've observed from a very young age because my dad used to bring me to the gym, and I would see this too. And and maybe as you can chime, I don't know your sexual preferences, but I. F- I, I'm shocked by the variation in men's balls. Mm. Mm-hmm. A lot of range. <laughs> a, a lot of range. A lot of range in the same sack. Yeah. I mean, you get out of a cold pool. <laughs> 
It's a transition to a hot day by a barbecue, yeah. wearing uh, wearing the biker shorts, you yeah. know, the running shorts or something like. Yeah, even, what's going on in there? Even the even our own sack can have that kind of range. What kind of range does your sack have? Would you say? <laughs> Are we looking to put a number to it? I think, I think we need a scale. I mean, there's a Richter scale for earthquakes. How is there not a genital scale? I would say there's something, I think it's called Dartix, Dartix Tuna. Dartix Tuna. Oh, God. Let's see now. What's it, what's it called? Dartix Tuna or something. We can think of that thing. There is a thing. You're looking at three people in the booth fast asleep. But okay. That's right. <laughs> Good luck with this. Dartix oh, Ben just woke up. Tu- Dartix tunic, I think is tunic, is what I'm thinking yeah. of. All right, there's a phenomenon that when a, a male wades into, let's say, a cold yeah. body of water, okay. like a lake or something, the testes lift up. Mm. They, they want to stay warm. And mm. so they will actually raise up. And then the... the your testicle will end up looking like a squirrel's brain. Mm. You know, it's kind of tighter and thicker, yeah. whatever. And then there's those hot summer Louisiana days when it just all starts to head down toward the ground. Yeah. <laughs> so it ex- expands and contracts also, like a goes from like squirrel's brain to, I don't know, a rolled up hamster or... Yeah, we, we we don't have to live I'm just, in it. It doesn't just, have to be rodentia. I'm just saying. You can pick a vegetable. I'll, I'll just say this as a, just a blanket statement. Darto's tunic. You can't rely on the appearance of your testicles. Like, if you were like a testicle model. Oh, can- listen. I've said, it a ma- I've said it many times. Here's my challenge to all the ladies. Yeah. I will take George Clooney's nutsack, and I will take Danny DeVito's nutsack, and we'll just put it through a hole in a piece of plywood, just dangle it <laughs> yeah. out there. And you have to decide just by the sack yeah. which one's going to bed you tonight. Can we, we sniff it? Y- you Whoa. can sniff it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that could make a difference. Clooney's really? probably smells like coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm or just Brad saying Pitt. there's nothing you could get off of. You know, Dolph Lundgren's sack looks the exact <laughs> same as a Jared from Subway sack. You've given this much more thought. A lot of thought. Yes. Yeah, so that's another thing that we should probably off the air discuss and investigate mm-hmm. is your obsession with different... I'm obsessed with my sack appearance, but I don't like think about yours. Mm. Well, I've given great consideration to your sack on it. <laughs> <laughs> All this sack talk makes me want to talk about something I talk about once every couple of years, but I'm I'm kind of interested in your comedic minds. Mm. You know, we also have a female in okay. here, so she could provide a, you know feminine insight mm-hmm. to this. I had this idea that I I thought would just be, it's the bee's knees, as the kids say, mm. that this would just take over the country, which is we do a lot of focusing on uh, penis size. Mm-hmm. And uh, once in a while, some dick pic will slip and make it out in the internet. Some guy's big dick, you know, some rapper, some celebrity or something like that. And as a society, there's big dick energy. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we've, I think it's fair to say that we're, we may not be penis size obsessed, but it's something that's been talked about for a long time. And it factors in. If there's any celebrity, you know, Milton Berle. Oh, that guy had a big dick. He did. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was funny. Yeah, but th- that was second. To, that was second to the size of his hog. <laughs> there was always you know a I mean? rumor that he was in a porn. Yeah, there's a there's a, been a couple celebrities. Yeah, where we've we we, we surmise they have a big dick. Mm-hmm. It's discussed a lot. Yeah. So obviously, it's something that's at the front of all our minds. What do you guys think about this competition? Every year. Mm-hmm. All males in the U.S. have to do a water displacement test with their penis. Now, why water displacement? Well, because it's not all about length. It's not all about width, but it is about overall volume. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So if you got a boner and we laid you down on a thin 
sheet of, uh, let's say, aluminum. Okay. And we put a hole in it. Yeah. And we put your dick through it. Yeah. And we lowered you down onto a graduated cylinder. Yeah. Until the <laughs> aluminum met the top of the graduated cylinder. How much water you displaced mm-hmm. would be your overall hog size. Okay. Then that would be recorded. Yeah. And you would then get a windbreaker. And that windbreaker would have a number on it. Yeah. But it wouldn't be the size of your penis. It would be your ranking. So out of... <laughs> I've given this a lot of thought, but I, I still... Yeah. But you haven't thought it through. Like, I, how have. Many, okay, I have. How, There's room okay. for improvement. Okay. But, how, but, many, how many males are there in the U.S.? Okay. Give me the number. What? Yeah. Well, well, hold on. The U.S., has about 330 million people, maybe 340 million people. I don't know, maybe it's 336 or, or, or something like that, right? Um, and, you know, roughly half of those are male. Okay. Women have us by a couple, you know, okay. a couple percentiles, but uh, a couple tenths, okay. you know, 51% women, 49 men or something okay. like that. But also we got to back out everyone under 18. Okay. Because I'm not a weirdo. Right. Okay. So... Everyone who's 18 and above, mandatory, yeah. like, the, like the census, yeah. or getting vaxxed, having a vax card, or some one of those, whatever this travel pass they're looking for okay, now. Quick, a couple of quick questions. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Mm-hmm. going to have to engage. Yeah, I have a quick question. So is this something, would this be like when you register to vote, the DMV handles this, or, or who's in charge of this? Because you do need a government entity. Homeland Security. Your- <laughs> okay, so we're going to take money away from... Immigration. See, we can't even decide the debt ceiling right now, and you want to put money into dick displacement. Oh, the debt ceiling's boring. There's 167 million males in this country. How many of these machines do we need? Well, we're going to have to back out. We'll have to back out the you know 37 million that are under 18. Okay, here's, yeah, but still a large group. Here's the other thing. I want. All right, you know what? I I, I can uh, back out what? even I, more. I'm going to help you. Over the help age, me. This is I'm your theory. You with this. I'm <laughs> over the age of seventy-five, you don't have to participate. But okay. here's the other under thing: under the age of eighteen, you don't have to participate. Here's a question mm-hmm. that I guarantee Ben can answer without having to Google: At what age does the male phallus stop growing? Like early twenties, maybe. Right. I think that's when you start. We're not going to measure. Unfully formed penises. Sorry. I I think when a male hits 18, uh, they're about done in the phallus department. I don't know. This is like, I'm still waiting for tits to grow in. Like, how long do you... Keep keep waiting. You don't know. I've been waiting on calves for 47 years. (laughs) Eat a lot of plastic like Adam. You'll grow something. So, 18th. Yeah. There's like registering for the draft or something. Okay. Water displacement. Okay. Volume. Then... A windbreaker is issued mm-hmm. with your number, but the number is a ranking. Mm-hmm. So if there's 100 million males and you came in pretty low, you may be 91 million, 800, 200, mm-hmm. you know, 27 mm-hmm. or something. Like, yeah. That is your number. It's going to wrap all the way around the car. Yeah, but <laughs> if you're top 10, that's a pretty big deal. You know what I mean? But you, and the number one, I mean, you'd wear that fucking number one like Evil Knievel wore his fucking so, number one <laughs> on that outfit. And then we select a weekend, could be Memorial Day or Labor Day, uh-huh. where everyone was forced to wear their windbreaker. <laughs> and first off, if you're in the top 10, you'd be a guest on Oprah. You'd be doing all the daytime and nighttime shows. You would be an mm-hmm. instant celebrity if you're anywhere in the top 10. Also, I got we got a we got a major problem that you're not even considering. Also, okay. e- each year, <laughs> no. we'd see if you were dethroned. No, no, okay. number one, who's taking number one down? Because okay. each year, a whole bunch of seventeen-year-olds turn eighteen. We're gonna know top ten in this category. We're gonna know top twenty, maybe even top fifty. We're gonna know their names. There We're gonna may know be their a face. celebrity in there. Okay, but <laughs> there's gonna be a problem with counterfeit jackets and stolen oh, yeah. penis size valor. There oh, will you're be right. A, a Stolen major. penis valor. So yeah. we're going tattoos then. <laughs> we got to do, well, look. Water, no, because it changes every year. Watermarks. I, you're right. People are going to head down to MacArthur Park with 40 bucks, <laughs> yeah. find some illegal. Yeah. And then what if you go from number one to like number 75? Now we're talking perhaps suicide. 
people well, lives will be lives will be lost. Yeah, well, that's why we have you know the official unveiling. But this is every so. Year. There's going to be murders. Seacrest hosts. This is going to be huge. <laughs> yeah, but when you'd you... be on the view, number one would be booked everywhere. Yeah. The day after the unveiling, you'd be like the winner of Dancing with the Stars. Uh-huh. You'd be able to go from the View, then you'd go over to Good Morning America, and you'd head over to Howard Stern show. I mean, you just you'd be sought after as number yeah. one. It, it can't it can't work because what if you're dating a woman and then you find mm, out who like one of her low in the rank ex uh-huh. is, and now <laughs> her ex has a bigger penis. Mm-hmm. Oh. This is all. This is this is oh, information. Yeah. So you're like a few years on. Yeah, you've been with her for yeah. a while. Yeah, and at some point you go, "Hun, where's my turtleneck?" She goes, "I think it's a, a hall closet." You go in there, <laughs> you find the windbreaker. You have you have the. It's going to be rainbow tape and big yeah. big numbers. You find out she was dating fifty seven. Yeah, and or, your ranking is in the millions. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You know, like she's taking pictures of him and he's like pointing to the back of the <laughs> truck. You know, or a num- number. Yeah. 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 See, all these questions, Orny, that you have are about feelings. And I need to know about the practical applications. Like, does mm-hmm. it lower your credit score? What Does it help you get a home loan? How? What does this ranking I, do? First for off, you? I think you'd be like a, if you, if you were in single digits, or even in double digits, you'd just be like a cop and the world would be your donut shop. You would wear that windbreaker <laughs> into any bar. You'd never pay for another drink, right? Mm-hmm. You just turn around. They see that number three on your back. It's like they would just <laughs> keep fucking the poor going. You'd be the bell of the ball. I, I think even if you're under a million, you're in the top 10%. Yeah. That's, that's you know, a great place to be. No, no, agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. What? What? Why have you given so much thought to this penis size thing? You know, when I'm in my kitchen trying to open cheese packets with yeah. my mouth, <laughs> I, I, I got a lot of downtime where I can just be left alone with my thoughts. You know, and that's what I came up with. And uh, everyone would wear the windbreaker. It'd be the greatest day ever at work. Yeah. Here's another problem. Uh, yeah. What if there's an absolute tie? It's going to be hard to really say down to the, you know, milliliter that this much water was mm-hmm. displaced. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Exactly the exact same amount of water. There, there could be. Here's the other thing. In places of higher altitude, water acts differently. Mm. This, this is way too well, complicated. tough shit, I think, on, on that. No, it isn't tough shit. This is rankings. <laughs> Well, look, I, you know, I'm not a scientist. Yeah. I'm just a dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody could come in and say mineral oil is a much more effective liquid to do this or cod liver yeah. oil yeah. or some other form of liquid that, that compensated for, you know, altitude and things yeah. of that nature. And yeah, yeah we'd have to it's obviously scientifically, we'd have to look into it. We'd have to regulate it. Yeah. And we'd have to have standards. We'd have to have clinicians, Mm -hmm. you know, put it in record. And and look, there's there's infrastructure and there's work to do, but I'm saying it's worth it. Here's the other thing. Some men are incapable of getting an erection. Yeah, that's on them. Oh, it is. Yeah. Not another category. You're no. automatically at the bottom, I think. It's 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 sort of like you have yeah. no sympathy at all. This is <laughs> no, it's like it's, like, it's <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, once in a while, a high school basketball tournament, and there's like four kids show up that can't play the game because yeah. they don't mm-hmm. have the fifth kid, and they just go, "Sorry, you're you're disqualified," yeah. or you get bumped back to the bottom of the tournament, or w- whatever that is. We'd have that. Okay. You Tell know you guys I mean? what, I'm going to start doing this, and I'll get back to you with my research. Are you? I'll let you, yeah. I'll, research on I'll what? Start, uh, I'll start doing the water displacement. Mm-hmm. Oh. You good, know, whenever good. I'm dating a guy, I'll be like, so wait, wait, I got this thing you got to do. Yeah. Yeah, we'll rank it's it. For an, it's for a science project. Hmm. We'll get him the windbreaker. <laughs> and the guy who's number one, he keeps, you know, he's going to get like a scepter and I'm picturing kind of Evil Knievel's outfit, but maybe uh-huh. Elvis meets Evil Knievel, like a cape, mm-hmm. big number one ranking. You want to talk about endorsement deals? Mm-hmm. This guy's going to have <laughs> Why do I get the feeling more you endorsement f- deals than Shaq. You fantasize about being number one. I, I'm, I, you know, but I'm could not, you imagine if you were? I, I, I couldn't, but that, you know, that would be, you know, the crown is heavy. 
So I got to tell you that. Curveball. Mm. What if they've got elephantitis? Mm. But here's the other in thing. In this Counter, country, it we not? Don't, it's not really is it scaled? There'll be an international <laughs> version of this as <laughs> yeah. well. Is it scaled according to body weight or height or BMI index, anything? No, it's just pure volume. This doesn't, this, I don't know. Or you're protesting too much, Orny. No, I'm not. Let's make sure you I'm think not. you're worried. Listen. so upset. Orny, are you crying? <laughs> no. Is that a tear? I got nothing to worry His about. His eyes are welling up with tears. Your penis stops growing <laughs> around 18 to 21. Yeah. If you want to do it on the 21st birthday, I do. Okay, then we can do that because there's going to be some drinking. There's going to be some <laughs> celebrating. There's going to be some drowning in tears <laughs> as well. All right. This I think this is a great uh, use of our government money, our tax money. This is, I mean. We just gave $2 billion to prisoners for like COVID relief. We, we waste money all day long. So this is. We built the. Bullet train from Merced to Turlock to never yeah. be finished. We All we do is force. throw money away. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Okay. This would be the best use of our money. Okay. Okay. All right. Quick break. We got a caller. It's got a urban dictionary question. We'll do that right after this. Mm. Simply safe. Spring is here and vacation season. Well, that's coming next. Before you pack your bag, secure your home with Simply Safe. We've we all use these guys here. Dawson had it set up in his apartment. And when he bought a house, he just moved his system to the house because it's not hardwired. So you can move with it. Only Simply Safe offers fast protect technology, allows agents to visually verify the threat, make sure it's real, and convey it with eyewitness evidence to 911 for fast police dispatch so they know it's real. Ships to your door, sets up. You do it yourself in like 30 minutes with financing through a firm. You can pay over time and installments, ones that fit your budget. Customize your home's perfect system in just a few minutes at Simply Safe. There's two eyes in there, simplysafe.com slash Adam. Go today, get the free indoor security camera plus 20% off your order with interactive monitoring. That's simplysafe.com slash Adam. It's a great company and a better product. There's no safe. Like simply safe. Okay. Yeah. I love Target. First of all, I'm overwhelmed when I go in there. There's too many choices for how many different size Ziploc bags do we need? There's an entire aisle. When I was a kid, there was one size. If you didn't like it, you went like this. Now they have snack, snack plus, quart, gallon, three gallon, jumbo, triple jumbo. They have one for the whole house. You put the whole house in a bag and you zip it up. Freezer, freezer. They'll do anything to sell you more bags. Freezer. Don't put the room temperature ones in the freezer. That's going to void the warranty. Orny Adams is on the Adam Carolla Show. Yeah, speaking of bags. All right. Uh, Orny, by the way, is doing a stand-up coming up Saturday. Bellflower, California, the stand-up comedy club. What is? never been there. Yeah, what is, what is Bellflower, California? It's a place where you could live in Los Angeles your entire life and have no idea where Bellflower <laughs> was, even though it was 13 miles away from downtown Los Angeles. It's strange, isn't it? So you, as a kid, you never went to Bellflower, California? We didn't have cars that could really be driven on the freeway for more than about 20 minutes <laughs> yeah. without vapor locking or overheating <laughs> or, or, you know, a retread tire coming yeah. off the rim or something. We had super shitty cars that were super limiting. Yeah. You know. So this might be this, what is it called? The stand-up comedy club? Mm -hmm. This might be a place you want to play. I'd, yeah, it's I'd, a really nice club. It's close. It? You've been there? I really like it. Well, you, you know, Richard books it. Yeah, but uh, I've never been there. It's really nice. The owners are huge fans of comedy. They're really sweet people. It's a great room. It's normal people. They sent know? me all these pictures of the club that have like, they have special booths, like mm -hmm. a George Carlin booth, a Robin mm -hmm. Williams booth, and they have actual autographed pictures from these. Like they, they It's like a museum. Sales. I wish you knew how Robin Williams and George Carlin would rank on my penis displacement test. Wouldn't that yes. be a wonderful it's all I can legacy? Think about. It's all I can think about. Uh, by oh, there the way. It is. Yeah. I mean, I have theories. Lisa Curry's, by the way, got a podcast out called Long Story Long with Lisa Curry. And uh, Thursdays, Series XM, where every fine podcast as well. Wait, uh, Adam, we didn't finish mm. with my plug. Sorry. 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 The Comedy and Magic Club, that's coming up in Hermosa Beach. It'll be May 18th. Thursday. And then uh, 
For more uh, dates, you go to orneyadams.com. Well, tomorrow night. Well, we did that. Okay, sorry. And besides, we got Leno. He'll sell tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Pluck that. Um, Let's tell him it's a fundraiser for something and keep his money. Yeah, oh, for the that's a good idea. school. Yeah, for the, for the, what, it's a fundraiser for penis measurement. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever this campaign's called. Don't insult the man. <laughs> With that idea. Do you think Leno has to like sign the little thing like I do with the improv and get his cash? Or? I think he just hops right back on his motorcycle and takes off. Yeah. Yeah, he waits around for 20 bucks or whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, favorite Nations is. All right, we got a caller up there. It's a curious question. Tom, 25, from California. Hey, guys, what's up? How's it going? Um, good. I don't want to keep this conversation going below the tool belt but uh i was listening to you guys thought about uh the um urban dictionary and i i was kind of wanted to uh see if you knew what this word was adam and, we, uh, the guess as well if you can kind of guess what it is we but, talked uh, about it yesterday on yesterday's show yeah. the urban dictionary yeah i have i don't know 10 entries in the urban dictionary but some have been removed or something there's more than dawson read yesterday we can look for those go ahead tom all right, so the word, um, it's mostly used in construction, but the word would be Murfath. What do you think that is? How do you say it? Murf, Murfath, like the little blue Smurfs, and then your ass. Oh, we used to say, like, when I was in construction, everything for them has to be sort of derogatory and foul and a little scatological, you know, like they, they'd go like, eh, they'd like hand you a piece of trim and they, you go, you got to take something off and you go, how much, what do you want? Three eighths. And they go, no, oh, just like a Smurfs kind of hair. That was always their thing. So there was a Smurfs something oh, yeah. hair. Maybe you said ass hair. Mm. We'd say Smurfs con hair out here. That meant just the width of the blade, you know, don't, don't take anything <laughs> off. Don't take anything real off. So, Smurfs ass hair, from what I know in construction, would mean just take a little, smidgen. a little bit off, just a smidgen, smidgen, smidgen off. Is that correct? Well, I want to correct. Well, not Smurf ass hair, just Smurf ass. Oh, okay. Well, I don't, I don't know Smurfs. I ass. know it makes a difference. Yeah. Is there a meaning to? Did it? Did you call so- to humiliate us? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. No. So basically, when you're sitting in a porta potty right after he cleaned it, mm. and you drop a load, ah. the backsplash oh. of it comes up, and mm. they clean it out with blue. And yeah. so when you wipe, you get an ass full of blue. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a uh, Smurf's ass. Yeah, Porta John. Well, I would yeah. say you were close, Adam. Nah, eh. but I will say this. It's so the thing about the porta potty is there's kind of a sweet spot. If you go in there just after the guy, and by the way, they don't have a sterilized scientific way to remove the contents of a full porta potty from a porta potty. Mm. There's a dude Mm. in rubber boots and rubber gloves who just walks into the front door drops a big hose Mm. into the pot and just goes back to the tanker truck and hits the reverse on it and just sucks the contents out. Mm. That's all they do. You think there's some Mm -hmm. special hose bib or something Mm -hmm. on the side that some mechanical arm locks into? No, no. They walk right in the front door. They just drop it. (laughs) Right. That's got to be one of the worst gigs in the world. But we've talked about this before. That's when I know... That the economy is tanked when, uh, or, or jobs is too, the economy is too good, is when they can't find anybody to do that job. Mm. That's the end. Like, yeah. It really is. Mm. But can I tell you? I don't know if I said. I I've had this correctly. fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> here here we go, everybody. I have, a, f- I have a fertile mind, <laughs> yeah. and I worked on construction sites for a long time, and the guy would drop the hose in, he'd hit the reversing, he'd show up at the tanker truck. Yeah. It was like sort of medium-sized, kind of mm-hmm. like those tanker trucks they'd use to wet down construction sites or something. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. There's a reverse bilge pump on it. It's like, oh, 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 it yeah. sucking, sucking stuff up. Uh, so here was my fantasy. My fantasy was, this is a horrible job. Now, uh, circling back to the sweet spot, 
you don't want to go in there hours before this guy's scheduled to come clean the thing out. Mm -hmm. And by the way, they have a sticker on the side of it, and they just write the date in and like sign their initials or something (laughs) to it. Yeah. But uh, you don't want to show up right after it's cleared up because it's just blue water, plop, splash. You want it to plop and hit something other than pure liquid because that causes the splash. Should we be having this discussion in front of a lady? You're right. I mean, let's get back to cock size. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. My fantasy. Yeah. If you drove one of those trucks for a living, let's just say you caught your old lady cheating. I like where you're going with this. You like this where I'm great. going yeah. with this? This is good. And let's just say that old lady drove a car with a sunroof. Perfect. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> yes. yeah. right, Matter yeah. of fact, I think I'm going to pick up a side job. Is yeah. the guy's <laughs> ranking that she cheated with bigger? Yeah, you check the hall closet. <laughs> you, you, you check you the, saw ledger, the windbreaker. The ledger. <laughs> yeah. The windbreaker ledger. You saw the windbreaker was strewn on the on the sofa arm while he was making sweet love to your lady. I just <laughs> love that you called it a windbreaker. I bet if we went out in the, to the streets and asked anybody under 25 what a windbreaker was, you know what? No, you're right. What do you call it then? Let's, let's a make, jacket. Let's make it a members only jacket. Yeah. <laughs> Remember those? It should be the Smoking the Bandit Trans Am yeah. members only jacket, mm-hmm. black one, with your ranking in gold leaf right on the back. Yeah. Well, I, how well, about if you're top, you know, I 1,000? No, of all, everyone's got to wear it. Yeah. No, I mean like the different colors and everything. No, no, the, the jackets need to be different colors. Yeah, so, you're right. Quality. Like right. the master. So it's like if you're if you're in the gold category, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're the real deal. Whereas right. if you're in the you know hot pink or something, I don't know, all the way at the end, you know. That would be great. You'd get the gold jacket. And mm-hmm. by the way, they put it on you when you're number yes. one. It's like the Masters. You mm. stand there, or it's like, you know, it's like when you go number one in the draft and the team owner puts the cap on you. You stand there while Oprah puts the jacket on you and then you walk into bars with your gold jacket on mm-hmm. you know and you see the guys with the black jacket and the mm-hmm. big numbers on the back and, and there's no you can't opt to be anonymous no you have to wear the jacket for memorial day no but weekend. i'm saying like if you're you're a guy you just Every don't want to be what rights do we have? It feels like this would be like the Second Amendment or Third Amendment. Well, it's like a, you're going, um, I'm going to the airport, but I'm not showing you my ID. You can't it's take like, the fifth on the... No. Okay. Yeah, come okay. on now. I don't feel like paying my taxes. It's government issued. You can't I, not. I talked to Wesley <laughs> Snipes. He said, it's, there's nothing in the Constitution that says I have to pay federal taxes. So like, okay, see how that works out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I will come after you, too. I'll, I'll be fucking... I'll be January 6th on your ass. Wow. Like, I'll go after you. The, you will go to court, and you will be in the fucking hole. Adam's wow. the commissioner of the That's water right. displacement. That's right. I'll put a commission together. i got to be honest with you. This could be your legacy. This could be like Arnold Palmer's drink. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. oh, Adam Kroll was known for his podcast, but, uh, you know. His legacy. His legacy. Yeah. 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 All right. So, you drive one of these uh, honey dipper trucks. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, you find out one of the guys with the gold jackets on top of your old lady. <laughs> yeah. She's got a BMW with a sunroof. You just go back down, mm-hmm. open the sunroof, put the hose in, put the pump on reverse, fill it to the top. I would even trowel it off to a smooth surface mm. and then take a stick and write, fuck you, whore. Oh, <laughs> with a with a stick, hmm. and that would be it. And that would be the only good part about driving that truck for a living. So the yeah. lesson being, if you're married to a guy driving one of those trucks, don't cheat. No, you don't yeah. even have to be married. No, you can just date him. Yeah, I feel like most revenge is okay. It's justified. I, yeah. I feel like I might. Do you have get revenge fantasies? Oh yeah. Really? Like what? Yeah, every day. I can't, I had this roommate years ago who was just a pile of shit, and every day I think if I see him somewhere, I'll slash all of his tires. What, oh, yeah. what did the roommate um, do that was so? He was he was just insane. I would come home and his friend would be sleeping in my bed with his dog, mm. or like he threw something at me one day, like just just a mess of a. Yeah. Grew up rich, but don't you so wish you had people. one of those trucks? Yeah, I absolutely do. Because you know, sla- slash tires is one thing, but if you, you can see me cruising around town in one, you get know what happens. Can I tell you what would be a better revenge fantasy? 
I don't know what could don't say this success. one. Yeah. Don't you dare say for success. that. Kind of, what does she even do? You can't open the car door. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You have to hire another truck. I don't to know come if insurance out. covers that. It's not a. I think the the ultimate revenge fantasy is that he gets another job and doesn't have that job anymore. No. That's, no. No. That's not a fantasy. That's not revenge. That's not revenge. But you could then hire somebody. Why isn't the fantasy? That see, she could see this coming. The better fantasy I don't know is that you've been anticip- cheated on. You think she's anticipated this? Yeah, I've the better fantasy. <laughs> yeah, because he probably like through the years has done some sort of variation of this. Like there was some landowner that he didn't like, so he let it leak a little bit out when he was cleaning it. So I'm sure she knows that he has weaponized. <laughs> he has weaponized the porta potty thing in the machine. Yes. I don't know. I'm just saying. If one of my friends, when they were like 22, one of my jerk-off buddies from high school drove one of those trucks, <laughs> there would be shit everywhere. <laughs> right. So that's a good friend that you, for you, to not get rid of. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there was a time in my life where I started to think in terms of keeping people for body parts. Like, if I needed a kidney mm-hmm. one day or something. What I mean keeping them? I just wouldn't get rid of their friendship if there were the right blood in type and everything. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, Adam, you need friends like this that have these weapons mm-hmm. for revenge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he did work in construction, so I think you do. I didn't buddy <laughs> up to any of the honey dipper guys. Because I didn't really deem them construction guys. Well, mm. it, listen, in all fairness, if you work on a TV show or a set, these are the Teamsters. The mm. Teamsters clean anything involved with a truck. Mm-hmm. So there is one Teamster that, I'm, I don't know what the ranking is, they're in charge of cleaning the toilets. Mm-hmm. And I only know that because one of them gave me a ride home one night, and <laughs> it, it smelled really bad. <laughs> and you, wait, yeah. did he tell you that's why it was, or did you just? No, nah, you just know they're like you know, Tim, the porta potty cleaning guy is going to give you a ride. <laughs> they used to say, "Hey, we need you on the set of Team." I'm going flying back to they like we'll pick you up at the airport, and they'd send a car. And then once the shoot was done, and they got what they needed, now they're sending you home. Oh, and the porta potty the guy. guy's yeah. driving me home. Now yeah, that guy to... should be showering in the bathroom. Uh, now I'm back in favor. They're of trying to save the forty bucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah well. Famously, uh, the Dave Matthews tour bus uh, offloaded the septic tank in mm. Chicago over a bridge, and there was Ooh. a tour boat going underneath oh. it at the time. Do you remember uh, that story? No, no. Oh, it's it's pretty epic. Uh. But it does make a man think, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, it's it can be weaponized. Yes, it's it still it not worse than what the steel mills are putting into Lake Michigan. I'm, Let's I'm not sure. get political. <laughs> All right, this is not the podcast to discuss I'm politics. I'm just saying it's not that bad. To discuss, you know, All right. infractions. What was the Dave Matthews story? It was epic. It was epic. But now, speaking of politics, although it's not going to be a political discussion here, um, mm-hmm. there's a new. So they're talking about. Say, I feel like we have comedians, we have a female. You guys are going to differ from me, but they there's a new ban or regulations on dishwashers, home dishwashers. They want to make them more efficient. In a in the interest of going green, we want to make light bulbs more efficient. We want to make dishwashers more efficient. We want to get rid of gas stoves mm-hmm. and things of that nature. So now. There's a new thing out of the Biden administration where they want these standards on dishwashers. And then, of course, half the country's cheering it. And the other half is saying that's more regulation. And then they say, well, the dishwashers, they use up so much water and so much energy heating the water and the motors and the sprayers and everything else. Um, but no, what no one ever talks about is just washing your fucking dishes in the goddamn sink like I've been telling everyone to do mm-hmm. for a million years because you're standing in the sink. Mm-hmm. You're rinsing everything off with hot water. You're there. Mm-hmm. You're home. There's a dish rack right here. You got the hot water flowing. The dishes are only being used by you and right. or family members. Why then load and unload? Why can't we stand for an extra minute and a half but that's going to use them. more water i hate dishwashers they won't use as much as the dishwashers but that will. can't be that can't be possible and and you're right i clean my dishes like remember that scene uh in silkward 
where she got mm-hmm. exposed to radiation and they yeah. scrubbed her down. Mm-hmm. I and I'm I'm the only one using my dishes. Right. What are you scared of? Me. <laughs> Me. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, what is that? Like, you go to a restaurant, they're not cleaning these dishes like this. No. So why don't we just do a PSA to just stop using the dishwashers in general? We wouldn't have to retrofit them or buy new expensive energy efficient ones. Just you're standing at the fucking sink. Just rinse your dish and get on with your life. something so nice about a dish out of the dishwasher it's like no. getting you your get, shirt you out of a dry cleaners rinse it before you put it in then you got to check it when you take it out and then you're you know it takes three days to fill the damn thing so you don't have a pot for three days or you put it in there and then everything sticks to it and dries and hardens and then you got to take it out and you, it's harder do you still to have roommates it. this sounds like a <laughs> roommate situation <laughs> i do we don't have a dishwasher but when i have had a dishwasher in place i hate it I had a roommate once I that wouldn't it. empty the dishwasher. They would use like a set of dishes when it was clean. They take it out, then mm-hmm. they put that back into the dishwasher no. and run it again. Oh no! Uh-uh. no. Foul. <clears throat> Just saying what people do. I had a roommate who took a hammer to all the dishes in the <laughs> sink. <laughs> That's a good roommate. His name was John. What did John? I got a good roommate Wait, what story. What were the circumstances here? No, the circumstances were he was a horrible roommate. He was a horrible roommate, <laughs> yeah. and uh, he once threw a boot through a plate glass sliding door and never replaced it. So we just had a piece of plywood up in the back of the house because I was playing the stereo too loud and he was in the back. Okay. Um, He had lots of transgressions with John, but the funny thing is, is when people do things that are so out of the ordinary and because you don't think like a terrorist, you can't even figure it out. I mean, the reason we don't have the twin towers anymore is because we can't think like terrorists Mm -hmm. because someone went, well, what if they fly the airplanes into the towers and you went, yeah, but they're in the airplane. Right. And then who's going to do that? No one's yeah. going to do that. They're, right. they're in the cockpit of the airplane. It's the first part of the airplane hits the tower. I'd I, say somebody with a low uh, penis uh, ranking uh, might do that. No one's <laughs> gonna, you know? Yes. So um, I came home one day to this little piece of shit house we rented in North Hollywood, and every dish in the sink was broken. Hmm. And I looked at it. <laughs> And I was like, but I can't think like a terrorist, right? Mm-hmm. So I thought uh, maybe all the water drained out and the weight of the dishes somehow <laughs> crammed down and cracked each other or something. I was like, that's that's unlikely, yeah. but maybe it's possible. Maybe they're more buoyant when the, the sink was full. And then I thought... No, 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 no. My roommate must have like got up on the counter to like hang a curtain or fix a curtain or something in front yeah. of the window and put his foot like on the top plate and crushed them all You're so or something. Naive. And I was like, what? And then later when he came home, I was like, what happened here, John? He's like, took a hammer to him. <laughs> Why? Pissed off. Well, what, are you? At the dishes. Yeah. I've never related to To not like so the dishes. Much. But why are they in a standing water? This doesn't sound It was like code. we made, you know, fucking jack off 22-year-old bachelor dudes. You yeah. know, they're in the sink. Someone threw in the sink. They didn't clean the dishes. They just put them in and <laughs> soaked them. And John had had enough. Yeah. Got his hammer out. <laughs> Where is John now? I think he's a nurse. Really? Yeah. I don't know if we need this guy in our... <laughs> He's I mean, in the look, competition. <laughs> yeah. As somebody who is, in my angrier times, punched out windows, which feels great. I recommend it. You've punched I out totally, a window? This is yes. interesting now. Did you I, cut look, your hand? Three, a little bit. I mean, I have three brothers. We're mm-hmm. angry people. Where are you from? Mm-hmm. Indiana. Yeah. Mm. I, like, I can... That sounds so satisfying, just mm-hmm. to bash a sink full of dishes with a hammer it's psychotic but that sounds like a yeah. great time what are you so angry about Do I ever, what isn't there to be angry about i mean there's a lot but <laughs> i don't know i'm just filled with rage all the time hmm. <laughs> what do you make of this if it can be channeled toward your sexuality, then I'm all for it. But if this is just you punching out window panes, I've stopped, I've stopped. then I I've would stopped ask the you to stop. Activity. I wouldn't have expected this from her, but this is this is why you you've got to be you gotta really be on your toes. You got to be guarded nowadays because you don't know who the next. I think women are on on um, I'd I'd say on par or not on par, but. I, I think statistically, I feel like women have overtaken men in the anger department. 
I, I, I see like more, we do a lot more snapping. I see more women fighting in supermarkets, you know, videos yeah. of more women going at it on airplanes and then more women like when they're screaming at cops and stuff, <laughs> like just screaming at the top of their mm. lungs when some poor cop is not involved with any whatever. Yeah. Like I women have come undone. Huh. How I do think you feel there's a about rage. This? There's a this, feminine rage. There's a, according to Adam, there's a feminine mm-hmm. rage. How do you feel about this? I think this? women more, are more likely to let something build and build. Like mm-hmm. men will kind of like yell once a week, and mm-hmm. I'll just simmer for months and mm-hmm. months and months, and you then fester. I can't take it anymore. And then yeah. I just fucking snap. I'm trying. I'm working on it. I haven't punched out a window since I was a teenager. <laughs> you guys should know <laughs> that uh, 19 years ago, the Dave Matthews tour bus <laughs> dumped 800 pounds of shit Oof. Uh, onto a uh, river cruise ship hmm. in uh, in Chicago. And the guy was just trying to dump it. Yeah. But his timing was either horrible or perfect, depending on <laughs> where you were. <laughs> and uh, he admitted it, and he was fine. And he got a year and a half probation. He had to do community service. Wow. But he was looking to save probably the 300 bucks the company Mm -hmm. charged to drain it. Hmm. So he wanted to pocket that money. So he had a scam. And by the way, if I were the judge in this case, I'd be like, this can't be one and done. You've crisscrossed the nation in this tour bus. This is your thing. Yeah. Right. You've done it several times. This is the time we caught you. Mm, I, I like need to that. know what kind of community service that was. Because <clears throat> mm. if it was just picking up trash on the side of the road, not enough. Mm. You want to work with it's kids? Not- <laughs> at, at risk youth? <laughs> 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 All right, we'll uh, take ourselves a break. We got some uh, news to get to, and we'll do that right after this. Fast growing trees. Well, you want some shade, you want some fruit, you want to breathe some life in your backyard or spring. Spring's coming, and that's why you got to get with fastgrowingtrees.com. They're experts, curate thousands of plants. So you find the perfect one to fit your unique climate. That's the whole thing. The plants flourish when they're in the right climate. The plant experts are always available. They can help you keep your plants healthy through the season. It's just, uh, it's a great family thing to do. Just go out, plant a tree. No long lines and hauling heavy plants around. Order online. Your plants are shipped to your door in just a few days. That's what I've done. I have beautiful trees from Fast Growing Trees. And... They have a 30-day Alive and Thrive guarantee. So, you know, everything's going to look great, and it's going to be fresh and beautiful right out of the box. It's fast-growing trees, right, Dawson? Join over 1.5 million happy fast-growing trees customers. Go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash Adam now to get 15% off your entire order. Get 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com slash Adam. Hey, it's Adam Carolla. Is your vehicle no longer stopping like it used to? Or does it squeal, shake, or grind when you brake? Don't miss spring brake deals at O'Reilly Auto Parts now through April 25th. You can get 15% off when you buy a set of Brake Best Select or Import Direct Brake Pads and two rotors. Brake Best Select and Import Direct Brake Pads are engineered for all driving conditions to restore and improve braking performance. With application-specific friction formulas, noise-canceling shims, and low-dust operation, trust Brake Best and Import Direct to deliver better braking. Don't take a chance on your next brake repair. The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts will help you find the brake parts and supplies you need to do the job right the first time. Stop by your local O'Reilly Auto Parts today or visit online, O'ReillyAuto.com. So if you said, like, there's just some friend, like your piece of shit roommate, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And uh, let's just say his name is Rob. Okay. Is his name Rob? No. It was Good. Spencer. Okay. Well, let's call him Spencer then. Uh-huh. If you had like, 
complain to someone about Spencer. Everyone knew who Spencer was, mm-hmm. you know. And then you said to one of your friends, uh, yeah, I came home today and uh, Spencer had cleaned the whole house and offered me a ride to the airport the following day. And if they started laughing, that's a bad sign because that's something a decent person could do. Mm-hmm. But anyone who knew Spencer knew there's no fucking way. Yeah. And uh, my dad's not not a fan of my work, per se. Mm-hmm. So I was saying to someone the other day. Someone, really? Yeah. <laughs> someone said to me. <laughs> did you, well, hold on. Did you ever see that Woody Allen documentary where, uh, you know, he's, a, he's won Academy Awards and they go and they talk to his parents uh, and he said, they never wanted me to go into this business. And they, and they, they asked the parents, what did you want him to be? And he goes, an accountant. Mm. And mm. they go, but aren't you proud of him? And they said, no, we would have been more proud right. if you'd been an accountant. Right. So I was like talking to somebody and they said, uh, you know, I've only seen like bits and pieces of the man show on the Internet, but uh, I don't really just watch like a whole episode. And I said, uh Huh. I don't I don't have a box set. There is a box set of the man show, but I, I don't I don't have it. And then I said, uh, but I could swing by my dad's house and grab it. And then they started laughing and then I started laughing and yeah. then we moved on. Yeah. That's always an indictment if it's something that's within the realm of normal mm. and mm-hmm. everyone's laughing. In, in, indictment of what? How so? If somebody said, uh, hey, went out to uh, dinner with a couple of guys in Orney. And uh, Orny picked up the check, and everyone started laughing. Yeah. Does that it, mean you're cheap fuck? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because if I said, I went out to dinner with a couple of guys and Jimmy Kimmel, and Jimmy Kimmel picked up the check, they'd all go, yeah, he's a mensch. Oh, yeah. He's a good. He's a generous guy. Yeah. They wouldn't yeah. laugh. Right. He always picks up the check. See, the idea is absolutely <laughs> inconceivable that Adam's dad might have that box set. That's the indictment. Ah, I got it. Okay. Thank you. I ran into Jimmy in Vegas. Oh. Yeah. At the club? No, not at the club. Hmm. Where do you think Jimmy and I would run into each other? Outside of the strip in Vegas. Outside of the strip. Yeah, I wasn't planning to bring this up, but I thought you would probably... Jimmy... You would probably laugh, and it would be an indictment. (laughs) Well, Jimmy golfs a little bit, but Mm -hmm. I don't don't know if it's golf. But that would be outside. (laughs) No, I don't think he's a gun range guy. I mean, you know... Could be, but nah. Something with food. No. An antique shop. What? No. Yeah. In Vegas? Yeah. This lamp is from 1984. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have antiques in Vegas. It's five minutes old. Well, I found the only antique shop in Vegas. And You're then, antiquing uh-huh. in Vegas. And I look up, and uh, the person I'm with said, That's, there's Jimmy Kimmel. Wow. So I went over and I said hi. What was he looking for? Did he tell you? We didn't get into that. No, we just had like a conversation and uh, it was very pleasant and that was it. And then I said, I've got to tell Adam because you would get a kick out of the fact that of all places, we're in an antique shop. Yeah, uh, way off the strip, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I used to do, I used to go to a lot of antique shops. I don't anymore. But yeah. uh, I'm trying to think. The only thing I... <sighs> Jimmy and I would either go to eat food or go to strip clubs back in the day. Those Mm. were two destinations. Did he pick up the tab? Jimmy has always been exceedingly generous with uh, picking up tabs. Did you ever discuss with Jimmy, and feel free to just say no or not answer this, uh, Sarah Silverman's problem with how she puts her feet up on the couch? Putting the feet on the couch? Is is there a consensus (laughs) to this? Yeah, I should broach that subject next Let's time get I him see on the him. Phone. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, I would have asked him that yeah. in the antique shop. Yeah, you should. Well, next time. Yeah. You didn't know it this yeah, time. Now, now I've got something to look forward to. I noticed my parents, you know, as your parents get older or your dad is like my mom was FaceTiming me the other day. And every time she FaceTimes me, inevitably she forgets it's a FaceTime. Mm-hmm. So she was FaceTiming me, and then she went around and showed everybody at the table, mm-hmm. and they all took it for a second. And by the time it came back to my mom, she now put the phone up to her ear. <laughs> and now I'm seeing the inside of my mom's ear. <laughs> you know? She's like uh, like ear-timing me or something. <laughs> it's just, you just have to laugh. I, you have to laugh at old people being old. I, you guys tell me. I, there's certain things that I realize I'm, uh, don't make me popular. I don't, I don't get it, mm-hmm. but, but you tell me. 
for instance, speaking of the table, you do a thing, you're at the table, there's like six people, I mean, two, three couples or something at some point, mm-hmm. drinks are ordered. At some point, you know, you got a martini and a slow gin fizz or whatever and a glass of wine, and they do this move where somebody goes, all right, yeah, everybody, so <laughs> glad when they raise the thing. They have to clank. And, my, and they have to hit everyone at the table. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, can't we just do the, do that <laughs> thing where you hoist it a little higher than yeah. your brow. Yeah. And then you do a kind of universal, you know, hey, okay. Mm-hmm. And then you, everyone's like reaching. Can we make this rule? Okay. Here's the rule. Yep. If you order a martini, you don't have to clink. It's a, it's if a, you order a fucking glass of wine because they stop the pour an inch and a half from the mm-hmm. top of the glass mm-hmm. of the wine. They have a huge wine glass. They'll pour it about halfway up. Mm-hmm. Clink all the fuck you want. Mm. This martini's $22. Yeah. By the time I'm done clinking with all yeah, you, yeah, I've yeah. lost $13 worth of <laughs> martini on this fucking table so we can carry out this bizarre ritual. Can't we all just do the hoist and the look? Do we have to do the... Have you ever been... I see people crawling on top of the table <laughs> to get to the person at the end with the short arms. Like, I don't want to leave them out. They get up from their have seat. You, why around. do we have to... In, in the middle of COVID, do we have to clink? Or do we just hoist? Yeah, yeah. It's I some, mean, I think martinis should be exempt, yeah. Well, then people like Adam will order martinis just so he doesn't <laughs> have to clink. participate. In the, I'll like, order a Pinot Noir in a martini glass so I can fuck all you. <laughs> I've had an entire dinner ruined because somebody... Like out of my reach, didn't even make an effort to clink my glass, <laughs> and I go, "That person doesn't like me." That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's with all the pressure and the judging. Just do oh, the hoist know, and the look. You know where you stand on a uh, toast. Yeah. You don't <laughs> like, get the clink. Like, some people just put their glass up, and you're right. People are diving to clink their glass, crawling I'm, across I'm going the like table, this, and people are avoiding me. <laughs> you know, it's a nightmare. Let's just do the race, the thing. Yeah. How about multiple toasts in one meal? No, it's, uh, no, no, that's too much. This isn't a fucking way. No, no. Are, do yeah. you do the the t- toast and then hit the table? There's those people no, too. No, I thought you were supposed no, to. I thought I that think was you, bad luck. You take the drink. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think you do that. You do the move. If you're walking through some sort of gathering some sort of yeah. award ceremony or something where people have like assigned tables yeah. and you got there a little bit late and guys sitting there drinking wine and you show up and you recognize him and he's holding the glass of wine. Mm-hmm. He'll do the the silent hoist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He doesn't stand up and walk across <laughs> to your table and bang it onto your glass. Yeah. He just do the, hey, it's uh, Steve. Yeah, the, I know that guy. Look, that's the yeah. move. That's no more clinking. All right, how about yeah. this? In protest... When you go out to eat and they start the toast, you pull out your airplane bottle of vodka and go over oh, my to mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And yes. you toast them. Yeah, to- that's here- the way to do it. Here's the other thing you can do. And mm. I could see you doing this and having fun with it. Screw it. Sacrifice your martini and try and take out as many drinks as you can. Just... Just take them out. You can take... Spillage out all over the... But bumper cars with drinks. You can take the martini glasses out. You can't take the wine glasses out because wine glasses are double the size that they used to be when we were young. Wine Mm -hmm. glasses used to be kind of narrow and whatever. Mm -hmm. Now they're huge, but they fill them halfway. So you got to bust them. Yeah, Yeah. you got to order something in a beer stein. There's no spill. Well, how about this? Inadvertently spill some of your vodka martini into the wine glass. You know what I mean? Come over. A yeah. little bit. I, 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 I'm just here's my point. The martini's twenty. <laughs> the martini's twenty three dollars. Jimmy's paying. Who cares? Well, when I'm out with Jimmy, I'll do it. Yes. All right, Lisa. Let's do some news. All right, here we go. First story: Robert De Niro has welcomed his seventh baby. He is seventy nine years old. Robert, not the baby. Mm. His wife's like 45, 46. Mm-hmm. Um, is she girlfriend's mother of girlfriend, all seven. Girlfriend. Girlfriend. I don't think the mother of all seven, although it seems he's improbable. He's famously got the jungle fever. I don't know if we're allowed to say that. No, anymore. I don't think you can. But here's the other thing: hmm. uh, where's the scorecard, uh, Robert De Niro versus Nick Cannon? Mm, that's right. Yeah, I'd like to see. I mean, the two of them and Elon are trying to repopulate the earth. Yeah, Nick's at like thirteen. De Niro's at like seven. Would you want to be De Niro's kid? I feel like. 30 years ago. Sounds good. (laughs) I feel like there's some pressure, though, with that. 
Yeah. Yeah, if there's seven, you're really splitting that inheritance quite a few ways. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, her name is Tiffany Chen. So maybe she's Chinese. He doesn't date uh, white Don't say women, it. I think. Oh, I thought you were going to say uh, something else. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, that's disappointing. He doesn't uh, date Italians or white women. I think he dates black women and Asian women. Boy, I'd love to see the hat collection in that house. <laughs> There's a lot of hats going on there. All right. Well, good for him. He's 79 <laughs> years young. Cranking out kids. And she got pregnant, I guess, at 44, 45, which is a tall order. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how much of this, his kid's life is he going to see? Like three years? And then he's out? Yeah. I mean, but... <laughs> I mean, I don't know. How how long do we think he's got? <laughs> we have a president that's 80. So he's, yeah, he's fine. Not, but he's listen, fine. Fine. <laughs> you don't need... Here's the thing. If Robert De Niro is your dad, you don't need physical Robert De Niro around. He's played every single role, yeah. and there's two hours of footage on it. Yeah. So if you want young, tough, streetwalker kind of yes. Robert De Niro, yeah. you got that one. You got Meet the Fockers, Dad. Mm-hmm. You can just sit there and watch a sort of AI version yeah, of your dad. That's we're been, five years away from a Robert De Niro hologram raising these kids there, anyway. Yeah, there's so much footage of him that he's never going to leave. He's going to star in a thousand movies after he dies. You could probably hire somebody to cut up all the footage and edit it into him being a father. Mm. Well, he was on, remember that Meet the uh, Parents? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, No, wait, Meet the Fockers. No, it was Meet the Parents first. I thought that was Steve... um, No, but De Niro... Meet the Parents was first. Oh, the, meet, oh, meet the, the parents dad. was the first one? Yeah, then meet the Fockers. Now, I'm, I used to play basketball with Gary Shandling, and uh, Jay, uh, what's his name, who directed those? Who, Jay, Jay uh, God, blanking on his name. Roach? Roach, yeah, Jay Roach. Is it Jay Roach? Yeah, he would uh, direct them, but he also played basketball with us. Really nice guy. Mm-hmm. And one day, I got a call out of the blue from the studio confirming that I existed. And I said, what's going on? They said, we're doing Meet the Fockers, and we've got a character named Orny, Orny Fokker, sort of named after you, but mm-hmm. it would be gratuitous and would screw with our ratings if we couldn't prove that you existed. Mm-hmm. And I said, yeah. They said, do you have a problem? And they said, no. Uh, I would have liked to have been cast in the film. Yeah. <laughs> mm. You know what I mean? I just drove by. Let's talk about that. Are we talking about the writer's strike? Because I just drove by Warner Brothers, and I'm s- hundreds of people. And I'm looking at these writers thinking, not one of you wants to write a show about me or oh, for me. You're right. You want me to have any empathy? Yeah. It, and is, not only that, probably listening to the radio at the time thinking, one pop star can't write a song about Orny Adams? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, remember when you were upset that who was who was the rock star that uh, that you had contacted in jail or something? And Remember that whole Lil, story? Lil' Kim. Yeah, yeah. So he, That's rubs, my assistant. Right. But yeah. That, so you get it. I he know. I know what it's like to love and lose. <laughs> <laughs> when is the last time a strike did any? I mean, like picketing. Mm. I remember in the old days, people used to get into fist fights on the picket line, but yeah. now it's Well, very they're shutting peace- down productions, which is mm-hmm. pretty nice, because they're showing up before the Teamsters, and Teamsters won't cross the picket line. Oh, okay. Oh. So, like, they're shutting down productions the, pretty much uh, every day. The picketing sign hasn't changed much in about 150 mm-hmm. years. Have you noticed that? It's still a fucking stick with yep. a piece of cardboard <laughs> stapled to it. Like, yeah. there's no technology can replace that. Yeah, that's true. I mean, think about... How society's evolved since, you know, the 30s when guys were down at the dock with the picket signs or the 40s when they're picketing GM or Ford or Chrysler or something. It'd be fist fights. It'd be fist fights, but from a technological standpoint, the exact same sign. Here's where it's changed, and I don't think it's helping, is they're all pre-printed. And this is a writer's strike. I'd like to see a little writing. Oh, There's a blank space for, for you... To like write, a little, fill in your own little thing? No, no, no. If if you <laughs> if you write greeting cards for a living, are you going to buy a greeting card at the store, no. or are you going to write your own? That's right. I, you know, like here's one I thought of. On the sign, you write, "I'd rather be writing." Hmm. I'm not even a writer, and I just came up with that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. No, How about this? Screw the studios. These are all. Not even a know, writer. Yeah. Well, not even a writer. I would argue 
that you should go down to the picketers, look at their signs, and tell them it needs punch up. Yeah. <laughs> you guys need Let's to see how that works for I'm you. I'm going to order some pizza. <laughs> yeah. We're going to stay late and we're going to see if we can punch up these signs a little bit because yeah. you're right for a creative group they're just not that creative. Where There's some fun ones. Are there? I, yeah, I've seen some Let's fun ones. Let's find some fun ones. And in the meantime, the wood that they're using, if this wasn't used for these signs, what is the wood? Is this fence wood? It's kind of pickety. Pardon the pun. Is there an actual picket section of picket picket woods that? Uh, there's a picket <laughs> yeah. fence. Yeah. Okay. And so, there's always a great Civil War general named Pickett. So was that where the where picketing comes from? You're using picket fence wood, and you're picketing. I think we may have just stumbled onto huh. something here because picketing doesn't really mean anything. Like, where's that genius yeah. with the Urban Dictionary phone call guy? Picket picketing must mean a the slat from a picket fence with a sign which would mean, put onto it. Which would mean it wouldn't be picketing if they didn't have that wood. Right. All right. Chat GPT this. Wrote uh, Chat GPT I okay. don't know what that one means. They're trying to say that Chat GPT couldn't write correctly and that the words are all jumbled and everything. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. Yeah, I didn't yeah. get it. Yeah. Uh, can we find, uh, see if picketing, what the origin of picketing is and if it's from a picket fence. That sounds logical. I feel like we can just say that moving forward as a fact. Make, yeah. All right, make it a fact. Regardless. Why don't we put that in the Urban Dictionary? Mm -hmm. Our therapist keeps saying we have to stand up for ourselves. So here we okay, are. These aren't my favorites. Sorry. Right. Yeah, you see, my whole thing is just. You know, if you're going to make a, a broad statement, you should be able to back it up. You know could, what I mean? Like, yeah. Would you, you, would you think this was out of line? Of what? I walk around throughout the picket mm -hmm. picketers yep. the writers yep. and i go uh look i'm staffing up for a sitcom not now i'm not i don't want you to right. be a scab or break the lines or anything All but right. uh this uh picket sign that you made unfunny and boring yeah <laughs> so yeah you're not on the list <laughs> that, that guy over there is funny that's yeah. a that's a turn of phrase yeah that guy's a wordsmith yeah so i'm just gonna go over there and i'm gonna go look when the dust settles we're staffing up, yeah. and I like your sign. Right, that's like a writer submission. Right. That's how you staff. How about, yeah. how about this line? for another sign? Mm -hmm. Oh no! I wrote this before the strike. Mm. Mm. Do you see? A lot of my stuff is intelligent, <laughs> and really, all my signs need to be pushed to the front when there's yeah. a red light, and people mm -hmm. have time uh, to read and process. Pass me a list when I'm at mm. the picket line this week. I'll. I'm spit. Yeah. This is all yeah. off the top of yeah. my head. If you question. <laughs> I did have this idea where uh, I have you film me showing up with like seven pizza boxes. Oh, let's do that, please. Let's do that. Oh, empty. So I can <laughs> yeah, so I can get on if the entertainment tonight and then yeah. one falls off the top and pops open and it's empty and we just panic and run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we should do that. Is there any sales on pizza in the area? Because we're not we're not paying full price. But that No, we're buying empty boxes. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. are. Oh yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, we're getting empty boxes. I don't mm -hmm. know if we're gonna purchase them. No, no. How about this? The one on the t we the one on the top has a pizza. Ah, Six underneath, uh, no smooth. pizza. You're right. So we get out of dog. Uh, that's and then, right. You know, we pull back a few that's minutes right. later. Yes. Yeah. Smooth. You know what's Let's interesting? This is a complete transition, but I feel like it's time. I, I notice, and this is the only show I'm on that this happens, that people will comment on social media afterwards that they think I have the voice of an old man. They're mm. shocked when they see how young I am in the video. Mm. Have you ever thought that? Be honest of me. Either of you. I've never been shocked. No, I think you have the sensibility of an old man. Mm. And I think that's what people think when they hear you. The, the tone is reminiscent of an old man, but the it sensibility is. says it's 19... 74 yeah. and you need to get off my lawn mm. that's the sensibility <laughs> yeah. you yeah. know what i mean yeah a little yeah. uh yeah all right a little grand torino um wait picket the origin of picketing <clears throat> is it from the picket fence oh. where did the term picketing come from the term itself is from the french word piquette uh meaning a stake or a pole yeah it's from picket picket 
Fence. Yeah. They had 10 fence. T- yeah. We got it. Yeah. Great. Okay. Not too sure we had to credit Brilliant. the French there. Yeah. <laughs> we could have skipped the first line. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Why do we have to credit them? It's always from the. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry that they were around before us and came up with words that we would have yeah. come uh, up with for yeah. the same item. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. We would have. And who knows? Our word would probably have been a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, but now we have to use theirs. Pique. I do hate the French, right. but they know how to protest. I guess. Yes. All right, what else All we right, got? Wait, story. what were we talking about? What was the last story? Oh, Robert De Niro and oh, his, okay. his next story. seven kids. All right, Ray Liotta died of silent killer that affects half of U.S. adults over 45. Something called pulmonary edema? Edema. Edema. All right, well, drag me, everyone. Um... Yeah, I don't, he's been dead for a year, so it's <laughs> just, just as exciting to find story. out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, we're all going to die, but I like when they go, I like when they include include you, you know, yeah. if you're a male and you're over 45, mm-hmm. there's a 50% chance. Yeah. All right. So statistically, yeah. um, Orny or me is not going to make it out of the studio today. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like. Yeah. Yeah. That's us. Yeah. No, we're, it's like, we're there. It's like these commercials where you're just sitting around enjoying your day and all of a sudden they're like. You know, that somebody's happy in the commercial. Like, mm-hmm. I just ran my first marathon. I've never felt better. And they're like, right. Shingles doesn't care. <laughs> right. Like, what? No. No. Shingles doesn't. Good for you. Shingles doesn't care. The, sh- the disease that caused the virus that causes shingles is probably inside of you. I, I don't think aging. I, I don't just... like. I don't like the uh, life insurance ones. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the the sober. 50 something year old woman with her mm-hmm. kind of lazy husband sitting in the kitchen and mm-hmm. she's always like did you hear did you hear what happened to um the uh Kragnowskis? Yeah. like oh, Vern's dead and then she looks at him and goes do you have life insurance and he goes i you know i'm working on it, honey which is kind of a weird thing like yeah. she should go sign him up but yes life insurance Shingles. Shingles doesn't care. Nothing. Nobody <laughs> Good cares. Good for you. Right. Shingle. They mock you in the car. Yeah. Shingles doesn't care. Yeah, I, I love that getting older just means every day you find out about a new disease you've never heard of before. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, it's within you. It's a lot of it's weird skin for you. stuff going on. And By the then, way, cancer's inside of you and doesn't care. That's right. What does care? Not Dave Matthews' bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. Well, I was going to say he doesn't give a shit, but he does. <laughs> All right. What the hell were we talking about? Oh, what next one. I'm oh, tired of Ray right. Liotta. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even know he died. I feel horrible. Oh, God. Oh, poor guy. What an actor. I loved him. Uh, DNA confirms woman kidnapped over 50 years ago is Melissa Highsmith. Oh. Uh, I had that in the pool. Mm. Yeah. You had her in your kidnap pool? Yeah, I did. I had that name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is not a story I would have remembered. I have no idea. I'm like, I okay. I'm a news junkie. Good for you, Melissa. Yeah. So they found she found out who her like biological parents were yeah, or something through 23andMe. But she didn't know before that she was kidnapped by her babysitter when she was 22 months old. Which mm. oh really? Yeah. You stop making money then. Yeah, it's a babysitter. Kid, you're done with the yeah, job. Yeah, fucking zero, almost zero referrals after that. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> babysitter's all word of mouth. Can't yeah. build them unless she's billing the parent parents yeah. while she kidnapped them. You've taken all those hours. Expense. You yeah. know, <laughs> kidnap your kid, but I'm still babysitting the kid. It is technically. Yeah, you do have to ask the person that was kidnapped. It is kind of flattering. You know, it's kind of yeah. like when a gay dude hits on you. Yeah. You know, you're kind of like, well, I'm not gay, but thanks. <laughs> you, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, because mm-hmm. she probably babysat a lot of ugly babies. She had her choice. And then was like, ooh, I'm taking this one. Like, th- there was something nice about that baby. I would look at it as a feather in my cap if I was kidnapped by the babysitter. A, it meant that my behavior was impeccable Mm -hmm. because you don't give a you don't kidnap a pain in the ass kid right kids running around with a spaghetti colander on his head smacking everything (laughs) with a wooden spoon you don't go i want another 50 years of this yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) you had to be easy on the eyes like she had to babysit you and fall in love with you how much of her parents appearance do you think she took into account for future appearance of the baby i wonder oh you mean like yeah Mom's a little portly. Whatever Dad it is, or maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. And let's take time. So the parents must have been good looking. Let's take time. I hope so. But let's take time to sort of think about the feelings of all the babies that weren't kidnapped by that babysitter. 
because they have to live with the fact that they were not kidnappable. Passed over. Passed over. Yeah, I wonder also... Not to make light of kidnapping. They'll do stories every once in a while where like the kidnapper, like the babysitter kidnapper... Mm -hmm lost her infant, you know, Uh Mm and childbirth or something, Mm -hmm. which somehow makes it Mm semi-acceptable. But it's like saying, Orny got his car stolen. So anyway, he stole that other guy's car because his was taken. (laughs) You'd be like, what the fuck? (laughs) It's still a crime. It's justice. You should get sympathy because you got your car stolen. Or she can't have kids. Oh, can't have kids. That's probably number one answer. Mm. Can't have Mm. kids. Yeah, and, need... and how about sorry? I'm just on oh, a roll. Good. I'm fired up today, <laughs> right? Right? Pa- yeah. What if she? Because she's a professional babysitter, so mm-hmm. she's seeing a lot of a lot of families. What if she felt this family wasn't taking proper care of this kid? Aha. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Maybe this was a righteous. I, I don't know. See, this is 52 years ago or 50 years ago. Yeah, over 50. Years there ago. were no professional babysitters. There were only <laughs> neighbors. Yeah, I Who's babysat. The... I was Good not Lord. a professional yeah. at all. I can't imagine. If there was a fire, I would have been the first one out of yeah. that house. Yeah. <laughs> I need to know how old this is. I would have run was. back, <laughs> grabbed a tub of ice cream, <laughs> and ran back out to the lawn. <laughs> and I'd just be sitting there looking at the flames, eating eating Hagen dazs Like, there's no way I was a professional babysitter. I, I wish I could make this up. But I was in Florida last week, and a lady, the lady who drove me to the airport, the car, you know, sometimes the car drivers talk too much. Oh, yeah. So she told me that her house caught on fire. She was in the house and ran out of the house. It caught on fire. Mm-hmm. And so I was always curious. I go, mm-hmm. did, you know, what would you, what would I grab? So I said, did you grab anything? And she said, I grabbed my father's ashes. Mm. <laughs> And I thought, that's the one thing yeah. that could have survived the fire. Yeah. <laughs> like, I grabbed one of the sterno logs from the fireplace. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. What the fuck? Yeah. First off, an urn is impenetrable. Yeah. It, you could put that thing in a kiln for four days. It would come out the same. Is it no. distinct from other ashes? I don't understand. Well, I mean, what's the worst thing that happens? It's, uh, what is it called? Cremate? Re-incremated? <laughs> I don't know, but you invented a religion. No, I think if I was to answer for her, I would say most of the damage or a lot of the damage caused by fires is water damage, ironically, because the fire department comes in, they start spraying the hoses. Mm -hmm. Maybe the ashes would have got knocked over and, you know, swept out to sea. Mm. That would have been an argument. Just like in Meet the Fockers. For comedy's sake, for comedy's sake, I'd say you got to... Yeah, I was thinking of Father of the Bride with Steve Martin, by the <laughs> right. way. But you're right. She's right. But I think comedically, this could still work for you. I, I think it's. I think we'll see it tomorrow night. That's yes. the problem with you. We will. Here's another tonight. If here, you hear this, here's another cause of death story that that I, sometimes I think we don't need to know the cause of death. Mm-hmm. So there was a guy in Florida a couple months ago. They were, you know, that frisbee game, the uh, ultimate disc frisbee or something. Mm-hmm. So they're playing it near Well, there's the, Frisbee golf? Yes, that's it. Okay. And it's on a golf course next to a water where there are alligators. The oh, Frisbee boy. went in there. Yes. And there's a guy. No. Now, these rich people, they don't go get the Frisbee. But there's a guy at nighttime that retrieves the Frisbees and sells it back to the people. Yes. Okay, he's been doing it for several years. Well, one day he disappeared after looking for the Frisbees. They found him a few days later <laughs> missing three Of the four limbs. And the final line of the news article said, the coroner has still not determined the cause of death. (laughs) Yeah, I do love that. It's a mystery. I'm going out on a limb, or that sounds like a pun, but I'm going to say (laughs) alligator attack. Yeah, remember like 14 years ago in Crete, George W. Bush was giving a press conference and some irate guy threw a shoe (laughs) in his head? and he, d- he ducked it. it, right. <laughs> but then the news, when I was watching the news that night, there goes someone threw two shoes at George W. Bush, and then they paused and went, in their country, it's a sign of disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to add that commentary. We got it. Well, here it's a great honor. So. Yes. Well, we we haven't uh, we haven't dealt with this before, so we didn't we haven't determined. There's a French word for this. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break. Come back and do some more news with Orny and Lisa right after this. How about a toast? A toast. <laughs> Hold on, let me run over there. 
Let me tell you about Angie. Angie's list is now Angie, and they've made it easier than ever to get all your home projects done right. I use Angie. Yep, what? You, Adam, you can do most everything Angie can do. True, but I'm busy, and I travel, and I have a schedule. So I'll let Angie do a lot of the stuff I don't have time to do or it doesn't make sense to do. 20 plus years of home service experience and they're combined with the new tools to simplify the entire process. So make it easy. On the Angie app, just answer a few questions. They'll handle the rest. See ratings and reviews, compare quotes from local pros and connect instantly. Cross items off the to-do list in just a few taps. Whether it's routine maintenance or dream remod, well, Angie makes it easy. Right, Dawson? Get your next project done right with the help of a pro from Angie. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. And now, Alcoa presents Definitely Not a Jew oh. on the Adam Carolla Show. Dateline, Fort Pierce, Florida. After an argument about allowing the dog into their bed, a 21-year-old man was found guilty of misdemeanor battery after assaulting his girlfriend with a pot of ramen noodles. (laughs) Definitely not a Jew. Is this a new segment? Well, it's been around since, uh, God, the radio days, I think. Yeah, Alcoa. I feel like it's time Alcoa f- sponsors it. for you to maybe start explaining some of these things to the newer listeners. Because I feel mm. like, you, you know, you have a lot of new listeners lately. Mm. Like, get it on, get it on, get it on, get it on. Yeah. Like, uh, what is that? Definitely not a Jew or things that Jews would never engage in. It's kind of baked into the title. And so what's, what is the thinking <laughs> there, that a Jew wouldn't be eating ramen? Where are we? That, that, that one was a little blurrier than most, but it's, uh, I'll forget, okay, yeah. the story you just told about the guy who was fishing frisbees right. out of the lake who was eaten by an alligator, that would work for definitely not a Jew. Yeah. There's no Do you Jew. want me to yell in the microphone like that guy just did? And we'll play the music behind it for not a Jew? I mean, I could... I don't know if we have the bed somewhere, but... <laughs> bum, 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 bum. In Florida! <laughs> yeah, something in oh, Florida. Man! <laughs> it involves reptiles and, you know, Nature. aggravated assault normally. <laughs> Stuff your tribe doesn't engage in. Thank you. Chosen. Thank chosen. All right, sorry. What else we got in the news department? This next one is insane. Uh, woman reacts after fiance's marriage proposal on piece of paper goes viral. What happened was this woman's uh, now fiance proposed to her via, he put a ring on the counter in the bathroom with a little note on a piece of paper that just said, will you marry me? And she took a picture of it and posted it on socials and it went viral. And all these people on the internet are dragging him and saying that this is lazy and this isn't how you propose to somebody. I, I don't know where people get the time. Yeah, I I am very enamored with people and their abilities. Even I've never left a review in my entire life for a restaurant or a hardware store. Thank I don't you. I don't know. I, I'm sort of glad that some people take the time to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I've never done it. I have no idea. This is, falls under neither here nor there. Uh, maybe it's a joke. I have no idea. Um, By the way, it looks it looks like the packaging that you open with your teeth. Yeah, the the, the <laughs> yeah. piece of white paper, uh-huh. serrated. I, I could tell that the counters are from the 1980s. That yes. needs to be renovated. They right. need to pull back on the picture so we can see the zales on the box, the yes. ring box. What does yeah. the hole go to? What do you mean, where's all going? Let me tell you. On the side of the <laughs> I'll tell you. Oh, there? I don't see the hole. Yeah, that is I for like a... All it, these comments from people on the internet, and they're like, he, that's not how you propose. you got to do something big. I'm like, that shit is so embarrassing. Would you punch a guy people, if he did this? No. I'd back up the honey wagon <laughs> to the convertible <laughs> if some bitch tried to pull this shit on me. This, to me, seems like a joke. Yeah, maybe he's joking around. I think he's joking around. I, either way, the internet shouldn't be weighing in on this. No. Yeah, and and maybe this is what she likes. Maybe this is how they communicate. Maybe it's a an inside joke. I think mm. just people need to settle mm. down and mind your own business. 
Yeah. Back in the days when wine glasses were a reasonable size. That's right. And shingles cared. That's right. That's <laughs> this right. Shit would not be attacked. I agree. Yeah. I'm neither here nor there. I just like the fact that he he screwed up the E on me yeah. and mm-hmm. didn't rewrite it. He goes, ah, mm. oh, this note's good enough. He's like, that's fine. I mean, look. But I'm not going to criticize He's him. given her a diamond ring. Who gives a fuck about his handwriting? <laughs> Truly. <laughs> How, is that a good ring? I'm not. Uh, I, I don't love it. It's a little pedestrian, but whatever. Hmm. How many carrots do you think we're looking at? No, I have no clue. Mm. I wouldn't even know a range. I'll you, say two and a half. Oh, who the fuck knows? But, I don't know anything about jewelry. <laughs> I don't Ju- trust guys that know jewelry. Did she say yes? Did she object to this She did method? say yes. Well, it's he went on reason. to tell this story because after it blew up on social media, then this woman and her fiance were all embarrassed. And he was like, I guess she had been like experienced a lot of racial slurs in the few days leading up to it. And he flew out. He flew across the country to be with her last minute and he what, was just what, like journaling or something and pulled this out of his journal and it's like what's everyone's race alone. how do they even know the how race? did a black race couple come into this? it's a black so couple she had she had been had some like racial slurs her oh, really? in the in the days leading up to it and so he flew out to like surprise mm. her i think so it they're was. black couple yeah oh this is ugly next time you do it in person you ask her to get married oh, in person oh, that what? is racist <laughs> what uh, say that again you ask, ask her to get what? married I'm sorry. ask her to get yes, married black thank, couple that's what i'm thank saying you. you know what i would do hmm. i would wait about two years i'd let it settle down Mm-hmm. And then I would, on this exact same counter, I would put a pile of cash, 100s, and that, a piece of paper like that, and I'd say, will you divorce me? Mm-hmm. Question mark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that that's, that would get the internet going. Well, in... I can tell nobody's vibing with this. No, no, but you're reminding me of something funny. Oh, <laughs> I'm adjacent. I'm funny adjacent. You're amused. You know what I mean? <laughs> Do I amuse you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've always said, and they don't really do it anymore. It's been replaced by the kiss cam, I guess. But I don't know. They used to do marriage proposals on the Jumbotron yes. mm-hmm. at the ball game. And if I ran a ball field, you know, whether it's Dodger Stadium or even, yep. even you know, the um, Staples Center or whatever they're calling it now, the Crypt or yeah. whatever. I would Whoa. just go, if somebody, obviously you would come to the person mm-hmm. and go, look, I want to get married and we're sitting in row 13 yeah. CP and could you throw the thing? I want to do the thing at halftime or whatever. I'd go, yeah, absolutely. Free of charge. We love doing it. But there is a, a stipulation, which is if you end up getting divorced, I need you back. Yeah, and we're going to televise. <laughs> we're going to show that. I think, and uh, we're going to have lawyers coming down. Yeah. The kids are going to be crying. Be- Excellent this for ratings. Is, this is going to be funny because enough people would get married statistically that there'd be a divorce cam oh, going yeah. like every third. Yeah, see, home this game. is what I'm thinking. And this I is watch the un- shit out of that, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think uh, we already. You weren't here, but we a guy a- shows up with the windbreaker with number seventeen <laughs> on yeah. the back of it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Pushes yeah, the guy yeah, out yeah, of the yeah. play. It becomes the halftime uh, show. Oh <laughs> yeah. I, we should update the listeners and the people watching on YouTube about Drunk Tank because. It's deep into development now, but we <laughs> should consider doing divorce cam. Mm-hmm. Where in parks all over the country, people are enjoying a game but get served. Yeah, divorce papers and or get arrested. It would be it would be sensational. At ballparks, yeah. yeah, at ballparks all over the country. Yeah, I would watch divorce cam. I, I, it's an instant hit. It's an instant. It'll hit. be the lead in for Drunk Tank. We could have our whole our own network. I don't even know why we're pitching to these. What are we doing here? E, we should just yeah. do it and get it out there. We've been talking about this way too much. We're waiting for Jimmy Kimmel, who drags. The guy drags. He's looking for antique sconces for the yes. drunk tank. He wants sconces. To- <laughs> <laughs> like, really, could you just bash them more? He needs more? six that all match, and it's really hard. You'll yeah. find like a pair or four, but it's hard to find six sconces mm-hmm. in the same antique shop. So yeah. that's what he's looking for, because he really wants to give it some ambiance. Yeah. The drunk tank. Yeah. So that's probably what he was doing. <laughs> all right. What's the next story? All right. Last one. Uh, last. Ugh. Yeah, I know. Uh, 
U.S. to propose new rules for airline cancellations and delays. Biden administration is working on new regulations to require airlines to compensate passengers and cover their meals in hotel rooms if they are stranded for reasons within the airline's control. Don't they do that already? Um, they do it when they feel like I think it. You have to argue with them. Oh. I tell me if you guys. I so I have a theory, but I, I'm interested in what what you think. Um, first off, just in general, when it comes to flying, I'm I'm sort of okay with it. People hmm. are way too emotional about it. They have too <laughs> many stories. It's like I fly all the time and have had a couple delays in a couple of situations Mm -hmm. like over the years though this isn't a frequent situation or problem mm -hmm. do you find the fact that you're getting shit faced in the air air, (laughs) the bathroom that the airport bathroom prior to the flight is sort of easing the that takes the edge off yeah that's what you're asking yeah my last two (laughs) flights have been canceled canceled oh really canceled the last two i was abandoned in houston and i had to uh, hop on another airline Uh uh-huh at at, uh sort of my own expense although they compensated me a little bit and then coming back from uh florida last week second flight canceled and that one was canceled because a flight attendant couldn't make the flight and Mm. there's no backup there's no anything the Mm. infrastructure is so stressed and let's not forget i'm the guy who in florida three months ago was on one of the airplanes that they're talking about on the news that almost collided with another airplane on the ground and we had to like go around it and shoot back up well, this is a tale of two different yeah. experiences because mm-hmm. I never, I mean, I've had bad experiences, but like by and large, for the money they charge and for where, how far you get to go and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. it's it's not a broken system, but mm-hmm. it's fine. Compensate people for for what have you, but um, I'm more interested in like the the borders a shit show right now. It's just a total shit show because we're canceling title eight or whatever it is and, or 42 sorry and uh now it's just gonna be we're gonna be overrun with god knows who but the border's a shit show and the economy's kind of a shit show and then ukraine's kind of a shit show and everything's kind of a shit show and i have this theory that politicians when everything's a shit show like the major debt ceiling and stuff mm-hmm. like that hunter biden and his laptop mm-hmm. and doing business with ukrainian energy companies and mm-hmm. stuff like that you go i got an idea about dishwashers yes <laughs> you know and you go huh yeah yeah we're gonna make dishwashers more efficient and you go oh <laughs> <laughs> well that seems good yeah. and then you know what else i'm doing these uh baggage fees I'm gonna go ahead and reduce mm-hmm. those and anyone who gets a flight delayed or canceled is going to get a voucher for Motel 6. And you go, well, all right. Now, finally, <laughs> yeah. something good's going on in this country. But I, I wonder if it's a weird intentional deflection from the more all-encompassing shit show that is this administration. And I do always think that, I always think about it like Gavin Newsom will do that. Like, it'll mm-hmm. be like, there's fucking homeless everywhere. Every taxpayer is picking up and moving to Florida. The ones that don't go to Florida are going to Texas. The school systems are for shit. The uh, uh, San Francisco's had to call the National Guard mm-hmm. <laughs> to come in because people are, like, getting assaulted on the streets. And he's like, by 2029, all school buses, all electric. And you go, oh, we're living... That's a utopian thing. Like that that's a you're out of problems <laughs> thing. Like I always say this is an example. Like I'll go like you go like you, let's just say you had a son mm-hmm. and he was deep into fentanyl and he was uh running drugs and he was toothless and he was turning out whores and you're like, you know, Bobby, we signed him up to learn uh Mandarin and Cantonese. Like you'd go <laughs> yeah. I thought he was a junkie who was running horse. I'm like, oh yeah, no, no, no. Focus on the fact mm-hmm. that he's going to learn Cantonese and yeah. Mandarin. And you go, well, that doesn't sound like a junkie who's running horse, but it's like a highfalutin thing mm-hmm. when as the rest turns to shit. Is that going on now with the dishwashers and right. the airlines? I think that's way more than a theory. I think it, politicians have done that since the beginning of time. It's like, ah, yeah, I. I 
let's do this other little thing because then they can do their little vanity project and keep getting donations from whatever evil companies and they don't have to worry yeah, about right. so they could doing be, anything real. They could be doing the dishwashers so Whirlpool sells more of these new efficient dishwashers that are going to be regulated and they could be more expensive. But I think as far as baggage and stuff like that, I mean, that was such a bullshit fee that these airlines imposed on us after 9-11 to raise enough money to keep flying. Well, they're making a lot of money now. And I think that's something that touches a lot of us, whereas immigration doesn't touch all of us every single day. A lot of these issues don't. And so I think the little things... So you say airline <laughs> baggage <laughs> fees touch all of us morning? versus immigration? I feel like yeah. immigration would affect us more, big uh, picture. Big, maybe big picture, but it's not... 55% of the country never goes on an airplane, so... Yes, half, they do. No. It's like half the country never goes to the airport. But half does. And that's a that's lot of people. That's the math. That's that a I've lot come to of people. From yeah. You. Yeah. <laughs> and the you other know corner. I'm going to push back. I don't care what direction. You can go You can go far no, the other way and I'll push back. I'll tell oh, you no, what you are, Oh, now we're going to look at. Here we go. You know what you are, Here we go. It always breaks You're down like in the second hour. You're like when my dog grabs a rawhide chew toy and I grab the other end. And I start pulling backward, but eventually we turn, and I'm pulling the direction he was pulling, and yeah. he's pulling, and we go full circle. Yeah, I love it. Here's the point. He's just pulling the other direction. Yeah. He doesn't have a direction. <laughs> he's going the direction you don't want to go. I have zero views. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I have I'll no what research. He does know. I can't back any of this up. Uh, I just like to challenge a little bit. That's yes. all. Yes. All right. Well, anyway, I don't know what the... My oh. only thing about the airlines is after we bailed them out, I think we should have all been able to fly for free for a year because fuck you. Yes, I agree. You and I'm sorry, is that more important you to you fees? than immigration? It, today? When I have flights coming up? Yeah, I would like to fly for free. <laughs> <laughs> well, half the people never go to the airport. They're I mean, lucky. But we... <laughs> they're lucky. They're so lucky. <laughs> I don't know if they would consider themselves lucky. But we, we also, there's crazy statistics like... You know, forty-one percent of adults over age uh, thirty-five have less than five hundred dollars in the bank. <laughs> like, nuts. I mean, it is mind-numbing. <laughs> like, fifty percent of Americans retirement age are retiring with nothing. Can like, you? Yeah. Can you? Anybody figure out where the money is coming from that everybody is spending right now? Because it is crazy. The inflation's crazy. Like, I understand that they're given a lot of money a few years ago during COVID, but now I, I have friends that still aren't working. How are they? This is the only country in the world where you cannot work for years and still I, have a live in a, a house or apartment, have high speed internet, I have a fa- new I had iPhones. A, I had a fantasy yesterday, which is there's a beach version of it and a valley version of it. The Valley version is on the rare occasion I stumble into a Starbucks like on a Wednesday at noon and people are just bivouacked everywhere, just sitting around like, I want to yell, what the fuck is going on with you people? Like, why don't you have to be somewhere? I had this yesterday. I was driving down PCH on my way here at like 1045 in the morning. And it was Monday. And I see these just gaggles of surfers, just 35-year-old dudes, 40-year-old dudes, all just sitting out there on their boards, like Mm -hmm. waiting for the next swell. And I literally wanted to pull over and get out of my car with a bullhorn and go, what the fuck is going on? (laughs) It's a weekday. It's 11 in the morning. Where the fuck is everyone working? What are you guys doing? I I don't know what's going on. And the bigger problem is that good-looking people don't feel they have to work at all. Mm. They feel like they can make money with social content. Yes. It's time for us to shut down good-looking people. Yes. I'm done with them. I'm looking right into the camera. I'm done. I want to support average-looking people, like everybody that works for your show. Average. Ben is average. That guy over there is average. That's who we should support. Yeah. We should be going to bars and buying them drinks. Well, Not the good-looking people. We shouldn't be helping the good-looking people put up their luggage. We shouldn't be first promoting you're good-looking big dicks, people. Now you're against Not good-looking against, people. What's happening? No, I morning? hope. <laughs> I'm, I'm a spokesman for the people. I hope the dude with the number one that he wears proudly <laughs> on the back of his gold jacket. I hope that guy's a fucking troll. 
Uh, I hope he has an overbite and male pattern baldness and can't grow a full beard. It's super patchy. I hope that guy just looks like shit just and he like wears Ron the Jeremy. number one <laughs> proudly. I can't yeah. wait to see the studies to see if there's any correlation between size and success because mm. I suspect number one is somebody who's very successful already. It uh, could be a, an NBA player. It could be mm. uh, a billionaire. Mm. But I, I suspect you know that there will be a correlation. That tracks. Because it comes with confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Big tr- big dick energy. I have big comic energy. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I have. And what has that done for you? It's done a lot. <laughs> a couple of houses. <laughs> no, I'm I'm saying <laughs> I would it would be it would be interesting because they do the thing where they go, the average Fortune five hundred CEOs over six foot tall. You know, they don't have a lot of short dudes in there. Yeah. So this is probably akin to that. Well, and again, it comes back to me not liking the mm-hmm. good-looking people because they have these studies where they show young children, impressionable young kids. They have no opinion of people, good-looking people. They go, who do you trust more? And they point at the good-looking person. Mm-hmm. Who would you rather be friends with? They point at the good-looking person. And so it's like, and then I'm next to the good-looking person, Mr. Average. Mm-hmm. Kid never looks at me. I don't know. I, I'd say you're better looking than Average. I, I disagree, but thank you. I, thank I, you. I disagree with you. What are you doing later? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We're waiting around Gosh. to figure out what happened to Ray Liotta. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Go home and sit. Get By the way, the plaque off your arteries. they found Ray Liotta with, without three limbs. And, and, and he died of natural causes. You know what I think killed him is being in fucking Cocaine Bear. Yeah. That's his that last like, film. Yeah. That's like now his legacy. Did you see Oof. that? It was horrific. Yeah. 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 Very graphic. Did you see it? It was really bad. Yeah. In a theater or did you get like a screener? Brad Williams rented out a theater. And was he in it? No, he just invited his funny friends. Didn't invite me. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just saying funny friends. <laughs> <laughs> you always get, something happens to your blood sugar level towards the end of the show. You always attack me. If we could put together, oh yeah, oh yeah. If we could put together a montage of all my appearances, where I'm attacked. I think you I just hit- compare me to a tug of war with your dog. Like... <laughs> Like I, like the young entrepreneur who was left in the swamp, I hit my saturation level with you. On it. <laughs> really? <Yes. laughs> All right, let's get go on, out on, on. A, on a big laugh. I, yeah. That'll about do At it. my expense. <laughs> <laughs> Orny's expense. Although, <clears throat> I've seen Orny perform live more than once. He crushes. Leno said he didn't want to go on after you. Is that true? No. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even hurt you. <laughs> doesn't hurt of me. He doesn't know who the fuck you are. Oh, I text with him more than, oh, than you do. Oh, bullshit. Pull out your phone. Oh, oh yeah. Pull out oh, your phone. I, I have receipts. I don't text him. I talk to him, bitch. Oh, okay. He called me yesterday. Yeah, okay. He did. Us. Okay, show me on your call log. I want to see how long that call was. No, oh, okay. Well, my that? earbuds weren't working at <laughs> okay. the time, so yeah. I had to kind of yeah. cut it short. Yeah. We talked for several minutes. He you, texted me. You want to know what I know? What do you know? He was in Europe doing a TV show we about all know cars. That. Yeah, we know that. Went to Florida to do some F1 mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's back. He was actually crashing a motorcycle while I was talking to him. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. sounds like you guys talk about a lot of surface stuff. Jay and I get into the deeper <laughs> sort of philosophy of life and, and all that sort of what stuff. Is this he's, like, uh, he's like going, oh, what, what do I want to... T- I want to talk about carburetors. I'm going to call Adam. Right? You want to talk about life and feel better about yourself. You call I me. I talked to him. I was like, you're going to be sharing the bill with Orny Adams. He's like, huh? I don't know a uh, horny madams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's what he said. All right. That's all, all right. he said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I talked to him less than 24 hours ago. Uh-huh. Yeah? Yeah, it's okay. What do you got? You got a couple of texts? A couple of texts? We were fucking mano y mano, man. Just the old school voice. Jay is very supportive of my comedy, and when I was on his show, (laughs) could not have been nicer. Okay. And I think he's 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 one of the uh, one of the coolest people in this business. And I don't talk to him probably as much as you. Okay. But uh, he he did call me when my special came out and was okay. very supportive. We'll, we'll see tonight if he knows you. Listen, you can I'll have be in the green room. Listen, I'll can, watch him walk right past you. You can you can have you can have Jimmy. 
You got Jimmy. I'll Jimmy. take Jimmy. I'll take Jimmy and Jay. You got Jimmy. The two kings of late night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> JJ. Uh, All right. Orny Adams. I'll tell you what you should do. You should go to ornyadams.com because there's live shows coming up Saturday and Bellflower at uh, the Stand Up Comedy Club and then also Comedy and Magic Club. Hermosa. Probably see Leno over there. Lisa Curry's got the podcast, Long Story Long with Lisa Curry. Mm-hmm. And you can find that on Thursday, Series XM. Right. Uh, You can go to amcroll.com because I'm going to Jimmy's Club. I'll be there tomorrow as you hear this, doing a stand up show there with some friends, Oklahoma City, New York, at uh, Sony Hall. Just go to amcroll.com for all the live shows. Until next time, Adam Crow for Ornie Adams and Lisa Curry saying mahalo.